Tina's on there. Yep, Tina's on there. And, and uh, Francisco, good morning, Francisco. I, I don't have one of those microphones. <laughs> ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. We may be live already. I don't know. I can't tell exactly. This delay, I mean, we're sitting here. We could be sitting here talking about. Sounds like your fire alarm's going off or something. That was my, my phone ding, ding, ding. Good morning, everybody. We're on, we're on live now. I know we are. Good morning, Miss Tina. Good morning, Francisco. Always good to see you, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. But I was talking about the fire alarm going off. My my CO2 alarm was going off earlier. Uh-oh. And I don't know why. Good morning, Mikey. So I opened the doors wide open and said it. It, it woke my wife up. It was so loud. And oh, I know. Those things can be piercing. And I was about ready to just rip it off the wall and stomp it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it needed a battery. Because I can't get it, I couldn't get it. Well, it, I thought maybe that was the issue, but it it must have gone off for some reason. I, but I had a candle burning. The dogs are fragrant right now because it's spring, <laughs> <laughs> and they're fine and they're finding stuff to eat outside that they, should, that they shouldn't ought to be eating. And so the dogs have been fragrant, and I had a candle going in there in the living room where that monitor is, and I think that's what set it off. But uh, well, I hope you don't have a leak. You you have gas heat, don't you? Yeah. I mean, as long as you don't have some kind of a weird burning leaking into your house. Good morning, Maple Bacon. Well, I finally got her shut down, and it it ain't. It has it says, it says zero now, so it's not. Well, if you stomped on it and threw it and everything, it might say zero. Well, now. I did. I didn't. I didn't do that. I said I thought about doing that. <laughs> Tina says yes, yes. The fresh scent of spring dog. <laughs> <laughs> you need to write that one down, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Mind if I use that, Tina? <laughs> When the snow melts and things get exposed, it's a special time of year. <laughs> for dogs. dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. And and Mike says that his was going off and if they're ten years old. You <laughs> they just go off and then you just throw them in the garbage. <laughs> yeah. Well, my door's open. Be right back. Sorry, guys. Open. Well, Brenda likes it closed. She gets too much echo upstairs. Oh. Morning, Brenda. Well, something was in the way of the door, but I pushed it closed anyway. Good morning, Miss Brenda. Miss Brenda, I, I, met, I met, reconnected with a couple of my pals from up Jonesboro Way this week that I haven't talked to since 1983. And uh, one of them appears to be a pal of your mother. Oh, that's right. I forgot to tell her that. Miss 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 Lisa Payne Morley. Lisa Payne was her maiden name. And I was I graduated with her and uh, we were in drafting class and things together. And I was looking for her ex husband. I've been looking for him for years and I found him. Kunta Kinte. Good morning, Car Key. Or, yeah, Carl. Good morning, Carl. 
I hope you're having a good morning so far. No, ain't it when you need to reconnect to your face. <laughs> there you are. Still seem there I am. That's cool. There you, there you am. You were like froze. Yeah, I was. I'm I don't know if Tina if you heard me, but it wasn't Teddy. He's he's right here doing his best imitation of camouflage lump. <laughs> or meatloaf. <laughs> and I was going <laughs> like that just to mess with your mind. I'm going to be at the movies with my daughter, so I'm afraid I'll miss most of the show. Oh, no, that's okay. Yeah, that's a good. I didn't mean it that way. I just meant we'll miss her because she's not here. Yeah, you, you could turn it on, be, and, but and she's daughter. going to the movies with her daughter. But you could turn it on at the movies and and either at one. Uh, you could broadcast it to the screen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That way we could get more coverage and we would, um, what was the word I was, more exposure and then, you know, everybody might run you out of the theater though. Yeah, what are you going to go see, Carol? Wonka. Wonka. There's another Wonka out. Yeah, there's a Wonka out with uh, Timothy Charlemagne playing the, the young Wonka. It's supposed to be pretty good. I've not seen it. Well, I'm just saying. I know what you're saying. The original one I loved. Yeah. But it bordered like it was borderline creepy. And then when when uh, Johnny did his version of it, it was it went way past the border of creepy. <laughs> well, it is I can't remember who who I can't remember who directed that one. I bet it was uh Tim Burton. Uh, it could have been. Yeah, you're right. They, they collaborated on a lot of stuff, and I, I would bet he had something to do with it. Because it was, like I said, it passed the... It wasn't awful, but it passed the border. Just a little <laughs> bit of creepy. <laughs> yeah, this one's just about him as a kid, and it's supposed to be... Uh, um. It's supposed to be pretty good. So, yeah, I think, uh, Carol, I guess you got a good point there. <laughs> there aren't too many choices. Brady wonders if it's still white out where I'm at. Have you, are you still blizzarding? No, look at that. Oh, look at that. I see sunshine out there. And and ground. Look at ground. ground. Yeah, whoa. <laughs> and what month is this? Just March. Well, that leaves. You, you well, this is the time of the year where it like tri it's tricksy. <laughs> it, <don't say. laughs> it makes you think for just a second. Maybe spring is on its way. <laughs> Di hey, Miss Diana. Hey, just so you know ahead of time, when do you want to plan on scheduling the packing day? Because. Mike has offered up your services to send your family. Pack. I don't know if he talked to you about it or not. I suspect he did not. Maple <laughs> bacon. We got they, lots of snow. They got there. the biggest U haul that they build. It won't <laughs> be enough. It won't be enough. They'll need a couple pickup trucks too. Well, but they got the big because that's how I've always moved. Yeah. <laughs> well, got, it's really got to be a hillbilly. I mean, they've got the giant, most ginormous you all ever made, <laughs> <laughs> and you'll need to. <laughs> you'll be so tired at the end of the day, you just fall over. <laughs> yeah, and I can't even do a lot of work, and I'll still be wore out. <laughs> but you, you can, you can just yell at people. That's true. All day long. That's true. But that's time yelling at people and supervising is hard work. People think <laughs> people think you're just being lazy, sitting there on your ass, not helping. But 
You're so working. Tina asked if you found a place, and I'll let you answer that. Tina, yes, we have. I'm going to show it to you here in a little bit, and we we have a closing date, and we are. If, and I've not heard any word of any problems with the appraisers or anything. If they've gotten there yet, they may not have. But um, first thing everybody wants to put, put up is the beds. <laughs> so Brenda Frankie's going to come down and yell at people. <laughs> where'd, she, where'd she say that? She said her mom has offered to come down and yell at people. Oh, well, <laughs> well, that's okay. She can yell from her house. <laughs> let's uh let's just put it that way we'll we'll let her yell from home <laughs> yeah she's brenda's gonna have some nice flower beds if carol when's your movie start i guess i i could get started to make sure you get to see pictures of the house because we're gonna talk about that a little bit today i didn't want to i tell well, you and Carol, if she plants the wrong flowers, the deer are going to eat them. Because <laughs> it's, it's, it's in a spot where deer would be in the yard eating them. It, that, the, the, the garden plot looks like a fortress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does. I told Brenda that last it, night. I think. It, looks like, it looks like they're like Bonesboro and the Shawnee are coming to get them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing I thought of, too, when I saw the garden was fenced in. I thought, oh, there's deer in that yard hanging out there. <laughs> I told Brenda, though. Um, but man, it's like you just cross the hill behind your behind that place and it's like woods for all the way to like Kentucky. Yeah, yeah, let me let me pull it up. I just I think it's the coolest it's place you guys leaf. ever looked at and I'm happy that you got that one. Brenda says that she thinks this was the one we should have had to begin with. Exactly. I She's agree. Right. It's it's one story, right? Well, you said there, well, there is there is a basement, but yeah, all the living quarters are one story. Unless sometime in the future we can add in. There it is on that 90 degree curve. You're going to have to like, yeah, maybe build you a little barrier there. When the I was thinking goes. about planting a bunch of trees there, but I don't know if they can grow fast enough to stop cars. When the kids come like when they're up to no good and they're, running too hard <laughs> carol said maybe your mom can yell at the deer so they don't eat your flowers <laughs> <laughs> okay you guys got the screen you, you do let me let me uh that is the house right there and the well, we got the we got the front screen and you're blocking half of it i am well, you just put, you brought up Carol's comment. Oh, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. No, it I'm takes sorry, up man. a big old chunk of the screen, but. I do, that does, doesn't it? Hmm. I, I, you go, what Carol said not that no Carol's way. comment doesn't deserve to be up there, just that it's. Blocking the screen. That, that deal blocks the screen. Well, that's it right there in a nutshell. That's a little bit, that's not the greatest picture, but. Uh, there's the garden Mark was talking about up there in the corner with the, the, the fence railing and the post and the stockade around it. And you see that patch of woods there on that ridge. When you cross that ridge, those woods just keep going to the northwest, west, literally all the way to Kentucky. Yeah, they do pretty much. You're right. But this is it. This is going to be the little house on the curve <laughs> instead of the prairie. And there's a there's a storage shed back here in the back, and then right here is the most the most most special reason that we bought the house is Tim's <laughs> got to live out here. Brenda's going to live in here. This you're, is my little schoolhouse. You're, 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 you're going to get. You're gonna get moved to the schoolhouse. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty pretty sure I'm gonna be in, in the dunce chair there. The uh, yeah, Mike. There's room for a, 
Uh, <laughs> there, yes, Mike, there's room for an airstream. You can, and your horse trailer, you can park it right there in the driveway. You could. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's pretty good. It's pretty good size, Carol. It's got. I mean, it's not huge. It's twelve hundred feet, twelve hundred something feet on top, and uh, of course, a matching basement if if it was ever built in. But the the funny thing about that is the the basement was actually put in this house and finished out after the house was built. Tim's in detention in the schoolhouse. <laughs> so is that a tin roof? That is a tin roof, my brother. But on the house and the and the outbuilding. Yeah, not on the shed, I don't think. I don't think that's just shingle, but yeah, all these are well, tin. The, shed, the shed don't count. You're no, that's don't. your that's your your place of solitude over there. And the house that they've got green tin on it, right? Yes, they do. I love it. I love that. That's what we have. And it's pretty new and it should last us the rest of our lives. Oh, I just saw they got a they got a satellite dish on the corner of the house. That's the first time I've noticed that. But this is this was the shop for the guy that lives here or lived well, he they're still there moving out. And it's gonna become my library and my office space and my my saturday morning shine will be coming from this building as soon as i get it so I, I can't wait and uh there's gonna there's room in this to bit to do quite a bit of stuff actually but i'm gonna put in some new bookshelves and then we're gonna put in some other stuff and i'm trying to decide now i i, I Somebody, I didn't think about a schoolhouse originally, but somebody mentioned that, and I thought, well, that's kind of true. It just sort of does. I wish it had a bigger cupola, maybe that might help, or cupola, whatever you call it. And uh, but the other cool thing about it, and you can't see oh. it, cupola, you can't see it from here, is there's a really cool weather vane on top of that. So uh, I didn't get to see if it was actually spinning round and round, but I think so. So anyway, this is the house, and uh, this is Highway 66 north, but no, uh, and that's north of Tennessee. Rogersville. Rod Rogersville, yeah. Because he, he just blanked out there for just a second. That, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's Rogersville. Rogersville. Or if uh, you're not from around here, Rogersville. <laughs> and Tina... Tina said that like rain on a tin roof was a great way to fall asleep. And, oh yeah. And I would offer up that hail on a tin roof is not a great way to fall asleep. <laughs> That's a good point too. Carol, have a good time at the movies. Hope you enjoy it. And uh, you'll have to give us a, a book report on it next time we meet <laughs> or a movie report, a review. <laughs> You're welcome, Carol. I, I'll make sure. Sometimes now let us know if it was creepy or not, because the other ones yeah. are kind of a little creepy. <laughs> let us know if it's creepy. What? Uh, I'm gonna have to catch up. Hey, Chuck. Did I see Chuck? Yeah. Hey, Chuck. Chuck what is there. What was said about? What did Brenda say? She said something because Tina mentioned it. The real estate person thought that I should uh, have the outbuilding for my business, but Tim said, no, it's mine, 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 mine. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of how it went. <laughs> no, no, that ain't happening. <laughs> <laughs> that is sort of how it went. And then after she thought about it a minute, she thought, yeah, that's probably a better idea. I can get kicked out of the house. <laughs> Carol, make sure you buy some mini donuts for you and your daughter. <laughs> I I kind of like chocolate covered rice. Morning, Chuck. <laughs> and mini mints or whatever they're junior mints and that sort of thing for a movie. If I'm gonna buy candy. But look at that holler. That I mean that look at that up through there. I don't know if I've got another area. I've got you, another aerial shot in a minute, I think that shows more. 
If you was a Cherokee man, you'd fight over that country. Well, and you have to. Fight. And they did. And they did. You're right. God. Well, here's some of the facts and features. I just thought I'd throw it. <laughs> what did he say? Or what was said? I'm just laughing about the fact that you have a facts and features page. <laughs> well, of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's got three bedrooms, two bathrooms. One's a full bath. The other one's what they're calling a half bath. It's got a primary bedroom. Well, I don't know why I put that. I should have cut that out. It's got a basement, which is unfinished. It's got carpet and hardwood floors and parts. And, and, and luxury, luxury vinyl. Luxury vinyl. <laughs> I'm not sure what luxury is. <laughs> I think that's another word for fancy linoleum, but I'm not it's sure. It's got linoleum. <laughs> I think that's so, in the kitchen. So we have at our house, and you've seen it, we have linoleum that was put in this house when it was built in 190 whatever. And it's yeah. it's honest to by God linoleum. And you and you have to coat it and it's beautiful and it's got the coolest pattern ever, patterns because there's multiple versions and you have to put linseed oil on it. Really? To keep it alive, to keep it. Well, that's probably why it's lasted so long. And that's why lens, that's why it's linoleum is because it was linseed oil based fabric that they put down. I did not know that. Well, Brenda says Rogersville was founded in 1777. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Mike, behind that house, it's it's rolling hills till, till you reach the next mountain ridge, and then it's rolling hills till you reach the next mountain ridge, and the next, and the next. It's pretty much, that's right in the heart of that ridge and valley country I may have talked about. If you see it from a, a from you look down on an aerial shot of that whole area in a, in a, topographics image where you can really see the the mountains and the valleys it's just ridge after ridge after ridge after ridge and uh, or mountains after mountain ridges and then there's in between them there's rolling hills and and, hills. and they run and they run amazingly straight from the northeast to the southwest That's over true. and over and over and over and over and over again until you get to Harlan, Kentucky, where um, Unjustified, if you've ever seen that show, where that was based out of. And um, it's the poorest county in the United States of America, Harlan, where Harlan County. And um, yeah, it's. Uh, Did you have people that far down? I I had people almost to there, not quite to there. They they came down to maybe a county and a half north of there. Yeah. But yeah, it's uh it's yeah. all coal it's all coal mining. If you Patty Loveless um sang the song the theme song for that show, she's gone now. But her people were like Harlan people and um uh haunting that song is is it was that a series or just a movie in the deep dark hills of southeastern kentucky um yeah it was a yeah it went like for seven seasons oh wow Not, what's the name of that unjustified brenda we never won it's a great one i love it i i own it <laughs> No, I'm oh, not plugging. I'm not. They don't support me in any way. <laughs> but I still, but I still can say I like the series. Yes, you can. But it's like Harlan's like thirty miles from where you're. You guys are going to be living. Yeah, and, and I don't know. Do you remember Pat Patrick? From yeah, Rocket. That's where he was from, or his where, people from Harlan. That area, his either his dad or pro well, probably his dad, his granddad, maybe all his granddads 
worked in the mines up there. He used to yep. talk about that. And that's what everybody did in that part of the world was they all got black lung. Yeah, they did. His he said his that's folks, what Patty Patty Love Patty Lovelace's dad died of black lung disease. Well, no wonder she sings hauntingly about it. Coal mining is not for not for wimps. Thank goodness they've cleaned it up some, but they still have issues. Yeah. I mean Well, I mean, even our we you know, we have big open pits out here. Right. Not a lot of them left yet, but the ones that are still operating, even those guys get, you know, you're in that coal all day long and I don't it's ever hard. see them wearing a respirator. It's or hard on you. Yeah, it is. It's a rough life, no kidding. Uh, and that's why when Pat used to talk about, I guess it was his grandfather, might might have been his dad, uh, talked about, you know, when they used to work in the mines, they'd go in before daylight and come out after da after dark, day after day after day after day. And I think he said they worked six days a week then. Yeah. And they got paid by the tonnage. So yep. if you find a ton of coal in a day, and I guess that was your crew. I don't know how that worked exactly, but for every ton you sent out of the mine, you got paid. And that was a pardon my expression, but piss poor way to do things. And that's why the unions came in there and were able to uh you know, the unions went in there, talk say what you will about unions, but in they the fought for the boys. Huh? They fought for the boys. They sure as hell did. And they, they made, they fixed a lot of stuff in the mines. Um, so, Tina, you can officially mark this down as like a great big old squirrel. Like a fox <laughs> squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe even a marmot, which is the world's largest squirrel. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Brenda's got it. I'd like to put up a pergola at the beginning of the woods and let it be the entrance to the enchanted forest. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to we'll have to plant a bunch of wildflowers along the edge of that wood so that you know attract more beards and stuff. Breads. Uh oh uh Teddy and Tim and Teddy tunnel. Well we could do that, Tina. I, I thought I was trying to figure out ways we could bury put me a, you know a tunnel in there to Traverse back and forth. <laughs> that that that's the only pitfall, I guess, to that is I've got to go out there every day. Maple Bacon said, "I guess you have to get yourself a riding lawnmower." Well, yeah, I know. Well, mate, I, I don't know, Mike. I'm pretty much a you know pay it to get done these days. I I don't know if I can sit on a riding lawnmower that long or not. I mean, I barely sit in this chair long enough to do a show. But I have thought about that. The guy, the fellow that's leaving, I don't know if he's selling off. They're moving to a condo and uh, downsizing <laughs> more than we are, obviously. And um, I don't know if he's leaving that stuff, if any of that stuff's staying behind or not. You should train. You should train Teddy to cut the grass. What do you think about that, bud? Get him a riding lawnmower with a air conditioned cab and bed, so he can take a kitty nap outside. You know what we do, Michael? We could get one that's like a robo mower, and put up the wire so it knows the path to follow, and doesn't get out of the yard. And then he could just ride around all day. And that's that's a pretty good idea. <laughs> Would you do that? Huh? Would you ride a lawnmower all day for, and help us mow the yard? I didn't. I seriously looked at robo mowers the other day uh, because, you know, well, because. And uh, yeah, it will be. That's true, Tina. That part is, it will be good. I need that. So I won't lie about it. Um. So maybe, Mike, maybe. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to be mowing it, so we'll figure. Well, I might be if we got a rider. I'll see. I'll see. Um, you know, I hated to mow yards when I was a kid and, and all that, but you know what? That was some of the best 
thinking time I think I ever got. I I worked through I worked through so many thoughts and ideas back then when I was a younger man when I was mowing. Even though I didn't like to mow, once I got into the rhythm of it, then you know it just kind of I just kind of I know that may sound crazy, but um, it just it was I, it, you know it was just me and the noise of the lawnmower walking following a lawnmower and uh or riding one whichever but it just gave me this time to you know think and clear my head or come up with other ideas i wish i wish i wish i wish i had been writing that stuff down back then okay let's see if we got anything else here appliances normal stuff laundry we're taking our laundry and brenda's talking about using the the laundry utility room is pretty good size. She's thinking about using it for, I don't know, something else. Tina says, I love to mow, but I kept running over rocks and roots. Well, yeah, <laughs> you know, I have that. When I was mowing and I, I, <laughs> I was supposed to look out for those things or go pick them up. Eh, you know, most of the time I ran over them too. I don't plan on, I don't plan on having them to mow a whole lot. I want hummingbird and butterfly habitat the songbird area and deer area so see she's got plans already and mike says i've been begging diana to let me buy a rotten lawnmower for our house <laughs> last 15 years <laughs> i know what you mean mike i know what you mean i was gonna if i had the money and could buy one i'd buy me a big old like a international cub or a, a cub cadet i should say with a cat an air-conditioned cab would be probably way too much to ask bruna says i used to, i love to mow with my troy belt well you know what this might be the time to put the troy belt back in action good morning dave cantrell welcome in space mountain dave is with us folks just mow once or twice a year to keep the scrub down there you go there you go, Tina. One thing about living out in the country again is not likely to have uh, your neighbors call you into the local gendarme and have them send you a nasty gram letter about your grass is too high. And yes, we did have that happen like a couple of years ago when I was on my on when I was laying in bed and couldn't move and having surgery and all that crap. Some the yard got up a little bit in the spring. It wasn't even that high or that scruffy, but a few things, I guess, were going to seed out, but that was just, that was just thin edges along the margins, and somebody sent a nasty letter to, to the, I guess, the city, or the county, and they sent us a nasty letter, and they we're going to start finding us every month that we didn't get it cleaned up, and of course, we did. I found the guy to mow it then, because we were waiting on, we were trying to find somebody to mow it. And uh, we had no intentions of letting it get too high or too thick. Anyway, that's another good damn reason to leave the subdivision. We always figured it was the guy right next door because he mows his about twice a week. Anyway, there you go. That's what's in the house and all about the house. And Mike, look here what I did for you. Just for you. You probably even have a HOA that tells you what you can do and what you can't do on your own goddamn property. Well, in this subdivision, maybe. I never dealt with them. I don't pay any dues. The owner of this house might have to. But, you know, that's the only time that ha out here in the country. Uh that's, a, that's a good thing. Like, you pay people to tell you what you can do with your own dang land. Yeah, it's, it's the, he the heck with that. I'm a I'm a free trapper by God. <laughs> Sell my clues to the highest bidder. <laughs> <laughs> I just I, and I had to leave you for a minute cuz I was wandering I was looking for my phone. Oh. And, I, and the reason I was looking for my phone was because I looked out the back door and I saw right there. Whoa, what, that, what is that? That's an that's a little puddle of water that froze out on my back sidewalk. And ain't that cool? Hang on a minute. Let me make that big if I can. Oh, I didn't. How do I do that? Little. 
That is uh, pretty cool, buddy. That might. Damn it. It went away. Yeah, I'm trying to. Try... I thought I could make you make you big. You could. You did. And then you. Oh, and did you... I? Yeah. That must no. have been this no. one. Now go to me. Well, you said it's removed. You're not there, are you? Now you're there back. There I am. Now stop. Don't okay. be pushing no buttons. <laughs> well, I was trying to make you grit big. You know what that looks like? Brenda, what does that remind you of? Did you see that? It, looks, it reminds me of a punk and roll. <laughs> <laughs> punk and roll. <laughs> Damn. Now you what were them white ones? That were now like you that. flung a craven on me. What was the white one that was like a pumpkin log, but it was white? It wasn't. Well, what Mama called them peanut butter candy. She'd make them. Oh yeah, that they made them like yeah. That was that's probably what it is. Or Tina says cinnamon roll. <laughs> I never seen a ice a little ice pond that looked like that before. Well, let me tell you something. You need. Yeah, we to have ice, just FYI. <laughs> <laughs> you know they still have cold temperatures too. <laughs> it was still like six this morning. <laughs> Brenda says the laundry room was actually a bedroom. So with my stacking washer and dryer, I'll have plenty of room in there for my sewing area. Plus the floor is not carpeted, so it's easy to take care of. That's probably got some of that luxury vinyl. <laughs> I still haven't seen what <laughs> Hold on, my wife said something. Okay, there's a here's a little bit more info about the property and and the size and oh I know what I was gonna say. Wait a minute, I gotta go back. Mike. Look what I did here just for you guys and any European friends we just might have. Total area of the structure is 2,572 square feet or 23,923 square meters. <laughs> you need to project your screen again. Oh, oh, sorry. Look there, I put I did metric, although that looks that don't look right. That ain't that ain't right. That ain't right, but this one's right. Twelve hundred and twenty-eight square feet of interior livable area, which means you know it's not the unfinished basement. Four hundred and fourteen point zero eight, I got precise down to the hundreds. It was meter square square meters, Mike. I did that just for you guys, you and Diana. I think you guys do metrics. <laughs> so you know what I was talking about. And up just said the same thing over here. See, garage space is 4.6 meters square square meters by six no meters by six point one meters. So the garage is pretty good size, 15 by 20. In fact, the garage is at least as big as this room. And I, I was thinking yesterday that it's probably half the size of the one out here which would make sense but i actually think it's a little more than half so i should have plenty of room for tools in the car and you haven't mentioned the really cool feature on the property yet well there's probably two and i'm getting there don't rush me it's my damn show well and that that view is looking to the northwest west northwest well and you can when, see and how when you, and when you, and i've looked at it from the googly earth yeah. and when you and, and when you head when you head that direction you'll inch, you'll eventually hit the the state of kentucky not too far away yeah and it's just wood it's woods like those big woods in the background 
It's that forever. It's cool. Brenda, I think the mailbox is right here on the off side of the road. So we may have to cross the road to get to the mailbox. Maybe I need to do one of them like that. That guy did years ago where he had it on a cable and he could pull it up to his house. Good now morning, I Rhonda. Think, I, think, I think that'll be a good, like, exercise program. You got to zip across there to keep the <laughs> the local youngins from running you over on that corner. <laughs> That's true. Yes, we did, T or uh, Rhonda, we did. Welcome in the caffeinated misfit, everybody, if you didn't see her. Oh, you use square feet, Diana? Well, I'm sorry. I went to all this trouble of, of converting over to the metric system just for you guys. <laughs> you did. You did. Four, point four seven seven haws. <laughs> that I was, You beat me to it. I was going to say that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Four seven seven Oz. <laughs> you might have to tell that story. Well, sometime. here's a quick here's a quick squirrel. In wildlife school, you get lots of different kind of cool classes, and one of our classes was on uh, <laughs> giving taking a, a scientific journal article about wildlife and and distilling it down and doing a present of a, a verbal presentation. And we had a we had a young man named David Treat that was a great young man. And he gave a presentation about cottontail rabbits. And he said that they used that the average home range of a cottontail rabbit was like 2.47 haws. And he kept saying ha <laughs> and my roommates finally and he was a nut job anyway he finally put his hand up and he goes what is a ha <laughs> <laughs> and david said well it's a unit of measure and chuck goes well that's that's a an abbreviation for hectare <laughs> yeah it's a hectare <laughs> <laughs> Some people, some people in this country, I've even heard this said. I've heard some people say one hectare is like one acre is a metric acre, which is, I guess that's sort of true, but it's not quite. He's going four seven acres. Yeah. Is a ha. <laughs> Damn. How you remember all that stuff. <laughs> oh, Brenda's talking about moving her saltwater fish and her clownfish have laid more eggs for the fifth time. Yeah. Well, she looked in there yesterday or day before, and it looked like they had laid twice as many eggs as they've ever laid. And that's the fifth time they've done it. And then after the eggs get so mature, um, something's eating them. <laughs> we don't know if it's the parents. I don't think they might. I think they will. Well, eat you've them. never had them hatch, huh? Never had a match. Somebody always gets in there and gets them. I told Brenda one of these days we're going to have to put them in a cage. You got that little shrimp in there with them? Well, Brenda thinks he's dead. <laughs> so I don't know. Caffeinated Miss it, it said bad phone. My phone can't do your name, Rhonda, Rhonda, Rhonda. Um, it's not. Well, that depends on your definition of <laughs> close. It's about um, it's it's just barely. It's like just down the road. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and my <laughs> from my from my, <laughs> from my way of thinking, it ain't even worth even hardly talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably forty miles east of us, Rhonda, and we kind of wanted to move. I don't know what it was, but after we started looking, um, we thought we just ended, we started finding ourselves moving east. And um, the closer and further up we got, I mean, Greenville, the house we looked at with the little red door building uh, was where I was born, actually. And uh, Brenda's mother, is, who's our only living parent between the two of us, is... Um, in Johnson City, so we were about 20, 20, 25 miles from her. But now we're closer 
uh, <laughs> we're better 50 miles or so from her, so we're a safe distance. <laughs> and Tina's uh, using the Wyoming feet as a... <laughs> and Wyoming feet and miles are different. The Wyoming... <laughs> I, dro I drove 57 miles one way to work every day for 20 years. Yeah, but you drove on any given day. You might drive... Well, I did too, but you got way more space. I used to drive 200 miles a day just to go around my reservoir when I was doing stuff. And that was, you know, that, but then there was, and some days I had to go more than that, but not like you. I mean, you might have to drive 400 miles to get to a study site. Uh, uh, yep. I did that all the time. It's 40 miles is cool. Mike, the, the, the schoolhouse does not have a washroom. So that's an issue we've got to deal with once we move in. And we'll see how we're going to handle that. I'm sure I can get hand sanitizer, but we might we might put in a system for that building. <laughs> He's going to have to have a bucket. He didn't have to tell everybody that. That's exactly... <laughs> that's... <laughs> you could turn it into a just, bed breakfast. Just to hole out the wall. <laughs> or charge Brenda's mom rent to move in. <laughs> there ain't enough. She ain't got enough money, Mike. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> I don't I don't even think Brenda would let her right now. They're they've been yeah, That's so Tina cool. said she had a 40-mile drive just to school every day. Well, there you go, see. And that's in New York. And that, yeah. So, but anyway, that's the, uh, I, used, oh, I had to drive about 50, 25 miles, 30, I was 30. really hoping that that property line went all the way to the top of that ridge and that you yeah, got that, it doesn't. that you Wait, got that little patch of woods there well this is not totally correct this line here it goes it actually goes that they've drawn that probably on a you know i don't think that's the mark lines off the gis because it, it when i looked at the count the, the state gis maps i think it goes a little higher up into the woods but no, we don't own a whole lot of that, but I'm hoping that I can make friends with all these folks that do. Because <laughs> their deer, their stock is coming down eating my garden, I'm quite sure. Well, and you you showed me the, I mean, you, you gave me the coordinates and we looked at, yeah. at, the, at the local landscape and there's an awful lot of fishing ponds real close. <laughs> Yeah, a chamber pot might have been a little bit more polite and, and mixed company, Brenda. <laughs> maybe some people wouldn't even know what that is, but maybe we could get me what, a chamber, not only a chamber pot, but a, a big old seat that, you know, was made for that. My grandmother had one of those because she couldn't walk out of the, get out of the house. So my, 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 my grandfather's favorite joke, my mom's dad's favorite joke was about people from southern ohio who who had <laughs> formerly been kentuckians <laughs> like to make fun of kentucky <laughs> and their my grandpa's favorite joke was the difference between a, a a person from paris france and a person from kentucky <laughs> and 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 it was you know a, the person from paris france had a canopy over their bed and the person from Kentucky had a canopy under their bed. <laughs> Squirrel. And if that ain't funny, then you ain't never been there. <laughs> Cat, uh, Rhonda, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if we don't have turkeys in the yard at different times. And I told Brenda last night, it, I just thought about it a little bit. And I thought, damn, Brenda, you know what? We might have bears in, coming down out of our wood. <laughs> Rhonda said, yes, we called it Kentucky. <laughs> Kentucky. Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> I 
So this is the house and how it's laid out. You see, we got a living room. There's a fireplace, big kitchen, dining room area, and a master bedroom, and two bathrooms, and I wish that had a little round shower like that. I don't think it does. Well, I didn't see that. I didn't get to go through the whole house. I was sick that day. I, That's the door. Oh, that is the door. That's the, what? Is that the half bath in the master bedroom? Well, yeah. That's okay. That's okay. If that's the way it is, that's the way it is. Haven't been in a, haven't been in drafting class. That's a door. Yeah, I see that now. <laughs> I realize that's correct. Anyway, we're going to probably have the tub change. The bath, the shower changed out to a low step-in shower so I can get in and out of it easier and uh, with plenty of safety rails and bars. And that way, if I fall down over the side of the tub like I did in, in uh, <laughs> Utah or Colorado, it won't be nearly as dramatic. <laughs> that was a big old crash, brother. <laughs> It hurt and felt like a big old crash. Mark. It was a big old crash. And I'm like, are you dead? <laughs> and I said, well, I'm naked. And he said, I'll stay out here then. I'll just stay out here till you get your shit square away. <laughs> Pardon my French. <laughs> <laughs> That's a squirrel. That's another story. But that long trip we took this last time. Or last oh, time. my. First thing will be done is changing out the tub for a walk-in shower. That's Yes, Brendan, I just said that. Yeah, that's cool. That that's cool. And there's the other bedroom right here. And then this is the utility room that she was talking about using for her her um, sewing area. So the time we put our washer and dryer in there, which doesn't take up near as much room, you'll have a fair bit of room there and a closet and everything. And then the garage is right here with this little connecting hallway, which makes me think they probably added this garage on at some point in time in, in history. Um, that's my guess. Well, I was going to tell you earlier, though, I don't know if I put any pictures of the basement in here. I think I did. But they dug out and finished the or finished digging out and finishing the basement after the house was built. Which begs the question, how did they get in and out? They must have put in a, they must have blocked up the doorway. Interesting. Mm. Yeah, it is interesting. I just thought of that. Because I, I don't have, I don't know if there's a, Okay. Anyway, there you can see a view. That's actually west, and uh, or I think southwest. Southwest, yeah. And you can start. You can start to see the next ridge of mountains here. This ridge goes up all the way across, and then there's likewise. You can see how this is taken with a with a not a fisheye, but a wide angle lens and it makes it look like this range and that range run together right down there. That's not true. They, yeah, just, that's the next one to the Southwest or to yeah, the yeah, Southwest. The next one to the North right up here in Kentucky. Like Mark said, is not far from there actually. And uh, let's see, what is that sitting in the yard? I didn't tell them they could put a truck there. Well, that that's the tractor. They're going to leave you. Oh, that'd be good. <laughs> I bet you anything that's something for sale, like a car, like an old truck or something. Because that's how we do it down here, you know, just set it by the road and put a for sale sign on it. <laughs> and we got a few neighbors here, but we can't spit on any of them. And I bet I guarantee you that I can step out on the back porch and relieve myself should I choose to. And that has always been one of my uh, rules about if we ever bought another house that I was, it was going to be somewhere where I could get out on the back porch and take the leak if I by God wanted to. Now that wouldn't matter to most people and they might even sound gross, but when you're from the country I'm from, that's a normal thing. Yeah. If you can't even step out on your porch and take a leak, you're too close. You, you are, you're not living in the right place. <laughs> well, this little box right here is another interesting thing. And my, my, well, you and I talked about that. And uh, no, not too far, Rhonda. Yeah, so Virginia is just up the road. Yeah. Rhonda, and, and then West Virginia is not that. It's all, they all come together right there. West Virginia, yeah. Virginia, and Kentucky. 
and they all border Tennessee or almost West Virginia doesn't touch Tennessee, but you know, they're all right there close together. It's uh pretty neat that that's how it happens. It's uh, ho- that's holler country right there. That's God's country, holler country. Yeah, it sure is. Brenda, are you picking up picking up any paint colors? Do some painting inside the house, or are you leaving it all? Well, Mike, that's a good question, I, and you might want I need to ask Diana if she paints just in case. We might have her do that while she come when she comes down to help us. When she when she's unloading the truck, <laughs> yeah, when she, in between <laughs> loads, <laughs> in between box opening and carrying and toting, she might be able to do that. <laughs> So anyway, that's that's it. And there's just I'm just wanted to show different angles. Like since I had these pictures of Ariel, and uh, although I don't think they're hot, I think if it was me, I'd make them a little higher quality. But I, mean, I like them though. I think. Well, they're... yeah, it shows everything they should show. That's the house. I actually thought I put that one up front, and I didn't. Oh. Ron, it ought to be beautiful in the fall. No kidding. We're going to be at, surrounded. Look at that. Look at that porch. Yep. Porch goes all the way across. It's got a, it's got a porch swing. I don't know if the rocking chairs will stay or not. If they don't, we'll probably have to get another one. I grew up with people that had houses that had rocking, that had porch swings on them growing up. I think both my grandparents did. And, uh, I don't know. I just think that's a normal, natural thing. It ought to be. Cord swings are just good. They're good things. So anyway, there you can see the garage and the it's it's a it's brick, but they painted it white. In case you're wondering, it actually is brick, but uh, or most of it is anyway. Actually, that wall right there almost looks like blocks. But anyway, let's see here. And there's just a different angle. So see, I was being a little artist, artistic here, showing the porch. And not, well, they did. They took the pictures. Someone around here. Oh, <laughs> Diane is good at painting carpentry, flooring being the boss of all. And then she adds to that down here. You're right, Mike. Someone around here has to get shit done. <laughs> Rhonda decided I don't want to attach garage. I don't want an attached garage. I like Forge too much. Oh, you <laughs> are you saying it's because they burn up? Is that what you're saying? Not picking out any colors at this time. I would like to do touches of, of the ocean. See, that's why I got to have another room. She's, she's, she likes the beach. I like the mountains. And there's some nice garden shots. She'll be out. Uh, she better be out here planting flowers. That's all I got to say. There's that stove again, Mike. And I was starting to tell you about that a minute ago. Yeah, poor have hit. That's true. They do, Ron. I didn't think about that. That's a good point. But we drive a Mazda, so that's okay. Um. That little box out there is an outdoor furnace. Some of you may know what about those and some of you may not. I don't know. Tina, do you know people up your way that have that? No, it's not, though. It's not, uh, Rhonda. We've got city water. Now, they may have had a well somewhere here, but I don't know. But that's a furnace, and it's outside, and it pipes hot water into the house to help heat the house. And in some cases, heat to heat up to help the water heater stay hot. So, what she's saying, Tina says yes and love them. Do you have one, Tina? Uh, port swings are a good place to contemplate. Yes, they are. And when I was a kid, they were a good thing to play on because every once in a while, my cousin and I would, and we, <laughs> I don't know why we thought this was a great thing to do, but we'd we'd get up there and somehow manage to hook the chains up as short as possible, which put the 
check the swing almost up to the ceiling on the porch and then we'd get in that I, I, you know we were i guess we just like to get high on things and climb around i i guess not uh that didn't sound right oh well i've heard water heating but never seen it in practice yeah it does and some people at some places if you build it in first they use these with like floor, floor heat and you know they pop it through the floors or or the walls or whatever you're going to do and uh you know, it helps heat the house. I'll show you another picture in a minute. But this one, I believe, is for wood. And I say that because he's got a wood splitter. But he doesn't have a wood lot that I can tell unless that's it right there. I just now noticed that spot. But, you know, you load this thing up, basically, and it burns all night, like a day, and then you refill them. Some of them are bigger than others. Mike was talk, telling me about some he'd seen in Canada that you could literally put whole logs in. And I know they make them really big. And they, I mean, they use these things in, for industrial heating in some places. So you can imagine how big something like that is. They also burn coal, or some of them do. But I think this one's a wood stove. I know people are probably bored with this, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish it by George. And that's just some more angles of the house and kind of a cool looking sky. and you know, again, I'm just playing with the pictures they sent me. Here's my garage. And Mike, there's that log splitter you said you saw. And I know what now why I couldn't figure out you thought it was in the shop, but it's actually in the garage. Oops. It's actually in the garage. So, but I I would think that would stay with the house since it's got, you know, no doubt bought for that wooden heater. Um, so I don't know. But we'll see. I, I'm assuming it'll be there. And I mean, most of this stuff, I, I, all this stuff other than that, I think I hope's gone. I don't want to have to haul it off myself. But there's plenty of room in here for the car and then me to be able to do some stuff up front here. Hopefully in two motorcycles parked here someplace. Maybe right here in front of this side part of the door since they won't block or not the door. This section right here, it's a little bit wider. I'm hoping I can park one, two right there. Hey, buddy. You could almost like, you could almost put Mike's horse treader in that right there. Yeah, it almost fit, Mike. We might be able to back you up in there so you can hook up to electricity <laughs> and make it easier for you to walk into the house to you know, use the boys' room. Unload the ponies right there. Yeah, unload the ponies right there. <laughs> hey, what I could do, Mike, I could put in a power winch and with and have a little dolly. You could lower the tongue of your trailer or the fifth wheel uh, or the gooseneck par onto a little dolly, and I could put a winch in the front of the garage, and I could just pull you up nose first, and then the back would be out so you could, you know, let the ponies out the back. <laughs> Hell, this is getting better and better as I think about it. <laughs> Chuck and, and Don, several people said, hi, Teddy, and then you laid back down. Why'd you lay back down? Huh? Let go. Let go. Sometimes he does that because I've got my arm on his chair and it uh, messes him up. I mean, he don't like that. 50 amp plug in outside, please, and I'll top into your water line, tap into your water line. Okay, Mike, we'll work on that. I'll, I'll set up a, a spot and we'll put in a 50 amp outlet for your shoreline power and all that. Come on up, Rhonda. Well, to be, I think that would be a great thing to have. We can have the first Saturday morning shine gathering could be at the house. Hey, Terrell said hi, buddy. You want to say hi back? He said hi back, Terrells. He said my work here is done. That's pretty damn right. Boy, I'm foul mouth this morning. We may not have a swimming pool, but everybody's welcome. We can barbecue and talk and just enjoy each other's company. Swing on the porch swing and everybody can pitch a tent and go to bed. <laughs> And some could sleep inside. That's another thing we wanted to have was enough room so Brenda can have her shop and um, and we can have a spare bedroom for company because we 
we we had a spare bedroom here, but she's got her shop in two rooms now. So she's got to reorganize that a little bit. Got a hose and a slip. Oh, my, Rhonda, we could put in a great slip and slide right down through the yard. <laughs> <laughs> Maple Bacon says, Brent, I have the pool covered. I got a really good idea for one. Oh, Mikey, we got to talk about that. I'm sure that's going to be good. <laughs> and Rhonda, speaking of that, our kids have slip and slide parties at their house. Now, mind you, they're in their 30s. Well, and, and 40, and they have slip and slides outside their house. They put a little soap on it, run their hose out there, and let it. And they, and they don't live near a lake or a pond, or a, you know, they're just out there in the middle of the town with a big yard, and they just have all manners of fun. Oh, a zip line would be fun, Mike. That's another good idea. <laughs> Brenda says everybody could bring a blow up pool, we could all have one big pool party, <laughs> everybody could have an individual pool. Everybody'd have an individual pool. My old neighbors had one before they moved out in their front yard. Oh, did they? If you leave them there very long and you use them, they'll <laughs> we'll slide the right out to the highway. <laughs> well, we'd have to put some hay bales or something down there to stop people from going into the highway. That, that wouldn't be good. There's the, the kitchen. I started to say Brenda's kitchen. I had to catch myself. We could sell tickets that could help you pay down your new more. That's a good that's a good idea, Mike. You keep good ideas like that, buddy. You'll get you an invitation <laughs> forever. <laughs> we you might to, have you might have your own bedroom, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just might. <laughs> to heck with having other company. Well, with extra money, we could build in the basement and fix you up a nice cave. You can have your own man cave there. <laughs> Possibilities are endless, and we could sell many. That's different. where you could oh, keep yeah. your horses, Mike. Yeah, Mike. We could. Yeah, if I don't have enough room, we could. Maybe probably get the you don't have to bring them to my house because <laughs> I we got can, I got plenty. <laughs> I can put up a fence, Mike. We can run your ponies right there by the edge of the woods. <laughs> that country will grow grass. That country doesn't, yeah, it'll grow plenty of grass. I got, I got to show you. I got a, a, a buddy of mine just sent me a Mark Twain quote that you're going to appreciate more than anybody I know. Who, me or my? Who are you talking to? You, about? you. Oh, what did it say? I don't know if you can read it or not. I know who it is, but I can't read you it. No, it's Mark Twain. Yeah. And the quote is. A man who carries a cat by the tail learns something he can't learn in any other way. <laughs> <laughs> and Teddy's he's damn right. And Teddy's like agreeing a hundred percent. Yeah, he, he said, "Yeah, I'll show you. We'll see. I'll yeah, we'll 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 learn you by gar." <laughs> Well, you do still have free room and lodging at Mark at Mark's house, but he's just saying, you know, you could come here too. I got more grass. Yeah, you can you can bring them here if you need to. <laughs> you know what? I'll even fork a little hay to them occasionally. <laughs> if you pitch in on the hay, the hay, the hay bill, the and hay bill, you off. can you can. I'll fork a little hay to them. Rhonda, we got we've got a stove like that now, and and so we're kind of used to it. But there was a good chance we'd get a gas stove out here. I mean, buy a house that had gas, which is something we've never had. And um, man, I miss it. But we didn't. I got we got an electric stove now. I oh yeah, I thought you had a gas stove. No, I had a gas stove for years, and I loved it. And Wow, you've had one for Tina, 20 years, Tina. That's Tina pretty says cool. she loves her glass top. We got that's what we've got, and it's I don't know, I can't. All right, well, we I like ours. I got, I got less finesse with it. He wants, oh, he wants to have a talk with you about that cat by the tail thing, Mark. <laughs> Hi, Teddy. <laughs> 
He said, we'll do this in private, he said. <laughs> it wasn't a poke at you, Teddy. It was just it was just a, a wisdom it that if he picked you up by your tail, you wouldn't be, you would show him. <laughs> yeah, it was really in favor of you. What do you want? Mm -hmm. <laughs> boy. That's my boy. He's happy now. He's he'll be happy in the country. Yeah, I don't. And you asked Dean about going to get him back and forth, and I'm not sure yet. Backpack may be in order. I may get one of those bubble back. We're going to try a bubble back carrier anyway because they 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 don't like to go out much. So this is going to be a big change for them. So I'm hoping, but you know, I did think about building one of those runs like i've seen them well, kind of like a large hamster run where you can run from the house out to the you know the shop and that's what i'd do but i hadn't you know i hadn't studied on that much make, him a, make him a make him a tunnel yeah would you like a tunnel he plays in a tunnel. We got a short one that they play in all the time. I mean, make him a make him a tube. He can go from the house to the out to your shop. Could make it a vacuum system where I stick him in one side and it sucks. And, him and, thump, and it's like going to the bank. Thump. <laughs> I can remember years it's ago. It's like a mortar tube. Thump, <laughs> thump. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna really show my age now. I can remember going into department stores when I was a kid in John, downtown Johnson City. And they had these in a lot of places. But I can remember going there and walking up to the salesperson to buy something. That, and I wanted to say the, the cash register, but that's not true. What they did was they took your money as you stood there and they put it in one of those vacuum tubes and sent it upstairs to somebody sitting there counting it, I guess, and locking it up. And then they'd send you back down any change you rode in the, in, the, in the other tube and then they'd hand it to you. <laughs> what <was that? laughs> no, I'm just laughing at what you're telling. Oh, I, I mean, you I don't know if you remember ever seeing that or not, but I can remember going into several stores in Johnson City where that's how they got, that's how they moved money around in the store. And probably uh, everything. All, all I can remember, and I mean, they still use them. I mean, I could go to my bank. Yeah, today. Bank. The only place I remember those kind of things was at banks. Yeah, well, they, they had or them. In, or in mortar tubes. <laughs> <laughs> now they actually had them in in the store I'm, I'm that's sure. what i always called those and it's probably probably because dad always called them that or something like they do kind of make gotta, we gotta load our money in the mortar tube and boom <laughs> <laughs> man i got ink all over me today what is going on here is this leaking you you broke a pen buddy Oh, no, I hope not. This is my good pen. This is this kind of pen. Not my good, good pen, but one of my good, one of my favorite pens to write with. Hmm. Time out for an ink check here. Hang on just a second. Bang. I got plenty of that. I need to turn that off, Donna. I know I've said that before. Mutual distributors used to do that here. <laughs> Who's saying that? Tina. What's oh, mutual, yeah. What's mutual distributors? Probably another kind of distorer. Not anymore. Yeah, you know what? I bet they had... Well, he wouldn't do it in a convenience store because they didn't have convenience stores back then. We had little markets out in the country, but they weren't convenience stores. We had Jim Crumley. Had Jim Crumley's, yeah, all over the place. Jim Crumley, little store down on the curve of Highway 81. That's a squirrel. We better not go there right now. Yeah. I'm chasing enough as it is. 
in the living room. Yeah, and the fireplace. Like a store. <laughs> a store, yeah. Brenda says she remembers that at the Millers downtown here in Knoxville. It was, you know, when I was a kid, I didn't really grasp what they were doing. And then as I grew older, I, you know, realized that that's how that worked. And they, you know, they weren't changing your order right there on the spot. They were sending it to a cashier somewhere in the store. Probably where she was behind locked doors or he. Anyway, living room. I hope to have some somewhat similar, semi similar furniture in the, or leather couch or sofa. And it's a little wider looking than it is in this picture. Again, they use funky lenses for this stuff nowadays. Okay. Well, you get that 85 inch TV. <laughs> <laughs> I got a, we got a 51 or something. That's big enough for me. I don't need anything bigger than that. I don't want them coming out after me. This is that, that furnace I was just talking about. And this is where it comes into the basement. See these red lines coming in? That's the hot water going in and out. And this one's not plugged into the floor or the water heater. It's just plugged into the central heat and air. And here you can see it. And this is a gauge to tell you how to make sure the water level's where it's supposed to be. And this is a big heat exchanger that's attached to this big fan down here or unit. And all this blows up in the crosses and it adds heat to the, the AC and, 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 you know, heats the whole house. And, you know, uh, I'm back up one. I got to back up one because there is a, I got to figure out if that's a furnace or if that's just a, part of the ac system right there i'll have to figure that out but i don't mean to be telling tales out of school but that looks like something dr seuss invented <laughs> well it could be <laughs> or we used to say a rube goldberg set up <laughs> or some other things but it yeah it could have been done a little plumbed in a little neater but you know you get the idea i, I don't mean, think you i don't think you ever went down in my basement it's your house now at my, house, at my house but it looks like jerry's kids plumbed this place <laughs> Jerry's kids. Oh my God. i can't believe you said that i can't either that was awful we may have to have put a warning i may have to put a trigger warning in front of this one. <laughs> almost the house is almost off grid if you think about it you can read some solar panels. yeah i thought about solar panels out there mike it'd be a great place for solar panels not that i want to put them in mind you i, I don't know put them on the roof i would do, might do that but that's what i'd do um Mark's about got me turned off from panels on the ground because of what they do to wildlife, which I knew before, but I didn't think about it. Of course, he sees them in much larger scale than I do, but that's a squirrel for another day. Anyway, that's the basement. See, there's a lot of room down there to be finished out. I could I could put a chair lift. Is in that there. a door right there, Tim, on the where the here? Yeah, right there. No, but it might have been. That might have been where the door was at where that allowed them to get in here and build all this. And put I mean, it looks there. like that's light right there. Well, there, yeah, it, well, it looks different, but I don't think it's not open. What what they did do, and I'll tell on it, I'll tell on it, tell on myself here, well, sort of. The previous potential buyer had come in and noticed something about the inner wall. One of the inner walls looked like it was not quite plumb and, and, and maybe had shifted. So they brought in a, a state engineer from tennis. I don't know what department or something in Tennessee. And they brought him up to have him look at it and inspect the house. Yeah. And he, he figured he thought it was fine. And he, what he figured though was that's why he's the one that said that, from what That's, he could tell, they had built the house first and then built the basement and plumbed it in. So look at those. Oh, I just noticed something. Look at those floor rafters, Joyce. 
Those Man. beans are, they're big old beans. Those are serious. Those are, those are 10 or 12 inches at least. Well, they look like, that looks like on the bottom side there that they're rough sawn. Yeah, it does. I see. Like the they, they came from the sawmill. Yeah. I think that's cool. I think they're probably solid, and I bet they're solid oak. This one, I can almost see grain in this one. Yep. But look at those saw marks on that yeah, next one. Right there. here. Look at that right here. Cool. That's, that's. And this is the long That'll one. way out last you two. Oh, yeah. Way <laughs> out last us. So, anyway, the basement's okay. I told him if I read the letter from the inspector and what, everything he had to say about it, he, he, I don't have any fear about any of it. I think it's grand. So what is that? This is the, this is the little shed up by the edge of the woods, as you can see. And this is the lawnmower outdoor shed. So this is like a, I don't know if it's an Amish built or a tough shed or what it is. It's wooden. So that's a ramp they built there. That's the ramp they built to drive obviously right. mowers up and down or push them up and down, whichever the case may be. Right. So yeah. should I get a riding lawnmower, this is where it shall be parked. <laughs> be careful you drive the mower off the end. Well, that's that's always possible. <laughs> I can see somebody's foot slipping off the off the Break and the, hitting the gas or something, and off you go right down this end. <laughs> Hopefully, not to turn over. Did uh, Kay come in? I see some. Hey, Kay, good morning. Kay Atwood's joined us, folks. Yeah, Mike, that's the riding lawn. <coughs> Excuse me. That's the riding lawnmower garage. Sure enough, can you get it in with that angle and the door? Well, they must be able to because they've been doing it. I'm sure those doors are just set up to open all the way. And the one on the this door, what I'd call the right-hand door, obviously wouldn't go past this board, but that would be okay. That's not really hurting anything. This one, I'm sure, opens up flat against the, the building so you can drive up and in. And most you're you're either, gonna you're gonna want to hire a army of kids or a or get a riding lawnmower. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm hope I'm probably gonna hire it done. I'm I'm not lazy, but I can't do it. I just can't do it. So well you gotta do it if you had a big old riding lawnmower. But I might could have had a big old riding lawnmower. Yeah, I'd love to walk out there one day and walk up there and find me a brand new, you know John Deere tractor part John Deere tractor or a international cub cadet or uh, you know, I think I even well, tried has mowers now one of them uh what do they call them zero point zero turn or whatever yeah oh yeah yeah one of those things oh that would go in and out of that garage easy if you had one of those zero turn mowers because those things will just spin yeah you can just like what do you think about up? that mike I did lawnmower with the basket, and Teddy could come out there with you and just supervise. He could. Would you ride around in a basket on a lawnmower? He I said he had, that, he had to think about that. I bet he would freak out. <laughs> <laughs> Rhonda says, we just got the John Deere. John Deere. Lowe's has some. Lowe's had. Where'd he go? Where'd that go? Lowe's has some good money off them right now, oh, do they? And delivers for free. Hey, Ian, God, man, good to see you, buddy. Wanted to say hi or to two of my favorite wise men. <laughs> Boy, we need to talk and uh, can't stay long, but hopefully next week. Oh, we'd be really glad to see you, Ian. Big doings in the in hey, the buddy, Pruitt House. <laughs> I was almost always a fan of John Deere, but not after the last one my daddy got. It was mostly plastic. Yeah, they well they've changed a lot. <laughs> the engines in most John Deeres now were made by Kawasaki. I don't know who makes them now. Not that that would be a bad thing if they're still Kawasaki's, they'd be good. But they are okay. But they are Briggs and Stratton engines and good ones. Oh, they are Briggs. Okay, good. 
Look what you learn on this show. You just never know. That's, I mean, look, it's look just, how much knowledge you can procure. A plethora of <laughs> a useful, plethora, or a plethora of knowledge. <laughs> plenty of useful and useless trivia that you can pick up right here without even leaving the channel. <laughs> And that's the schoolhouse or the building or whatever we want to call it. I wish that, I wish the, the, uh, when, uh, weather vane was turned a little bit more, we could see it better. I can't remember if that's a horse on top of the arrow or if it's, I thought it was a chicken, but maybe not. Uh, which is another thing. Brenda says she will have a chicken. She's going to have chickens up there by the woods. Um, how did I get that part down? Anyway, as you guys can see, I got three windows to cover up. That thing is, um, I'm had, they, they had the measurements on something. Else. It seems like it's 18 by 20 or, or at least 16 by 20. So that's as big or bigger than this room is right here. I'm looking. So is that there. literally like an old school building? Well, kind of. I mean, it, the doors open in the way they would. Um, uh, School buildings would have an outhouse, of course. Mike, since you're worried about that, uh, excited to hear that you guys looks like it would be a good move. I think it will be, and we're we're really we're excited about that part. You know, new community, new people. Maybe we'll actually meet some of our neighbors again. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's kind of laid out like that. And what I actually thought I might do, I know this probably sounds crazy, but I'd like to have a corner where I could put my put a leather horse so I could do a little bit of leather stuff or something but well, look at that look at that uh, that's typical holler country look at that yeah. house across the way there that's that's blue <laughs> yeah, well you never know out here what you might find there's a purple house out there somewhere we looked at it or saw it one day we didn't look at it Oh, there'll be some more videos, Rhonda. Kay said, the last one my dad got was about 10 years ago, and it broke down about a few months after we got it, and they wouldn't do anything about it. It would have been cheaper to buy a new one. Oh, wow, Kay, I hate to hear that. We got a two-year warranty on it, and there's a guy down the street that works on them, so that's a plus. Well, you might be in good shape. Oh, bio break. <laughs> everybody wants if everybody wants to have an intermission and take a bio break, you're welcome. Feel free to do so. I just got a couple more pictures of the barn or the the this house. And I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Brad put a put a uh, ramp walkway on this too to make it easier for me to get up and down with a handrail. And uh, hopefully that'll all be set up and I'm hoping that my spousal unit, when she's in the gardening mood, will will plant some pretty things here around my around my building for her sweetheart. She must not be listening, or she'd have I something. Would, I would I would look, put a ramp on half of it and leave the stairs on the other half. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I want to leave the step. Yeah, I do want to do something like that. And, it and, then, and like, then like. Seven times a day, you get to use the steps. What are you saying? <laughs> I have to go that many times to go to the bathroom. No, you just get to you just get to use the steps seven times a day. Well, that's true. Yeah, steps, that's steps, idea. Are good, steps are good for you. Well, that's true. That's why I go up and down these. I don't like them, but they're good <laughs> for you. <laughs> That's kind of what I was thinking anyway about doing that. I even thought about leaving the steps as they are and putting the ramp off to the side on the uphill side, like kind of like the mower building was. Oh, yeah. So you got like a ramp over and you can, yeah. Oh, yeah. But I am going to have, I do want him to put some good handrails on it. Tina said, yeah, you live out there because you want to paint your house a color not approved by HOAs. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good, a good point. <laughs> you know, you know one of the key t things they put on houses when you're buying back here, and they made where you're at too. 
but out here they like to make a point of that is that you have no restrictions. <laughs> counties around here, especially rural counties like Haw this is Hawkins County. Um, this is this is the land of my, my people on my mother's side. Not too far, not really that far from where she grew up. Um, hell, hell, it actually is. It's just right up the road. Um, is that they they don't like to zone anything they they like to leave and that causes a lot of problems for a lot of other people but they don't they don't want to do that that's that. nobody got any right to tell you what to do with your own property yeah but they should be able to say something if your property's flooding down on somebody's house or something you know like well you know, i mean if it's that kind of a deal but if it's like if you want to paint your house bright screen Screaming Mimi Green. You Ain't should be your house to... bright screaming Mimi Green. I don't disagree with that. Ain't nobody got any right to tell anybody what to do. Rhonda <laughs> said here they're putting build construct restrictions because developers have been coming out and people don't want them. Oh, well, that's a different kind of restriction. <laughs> I like that. I actually kind of like that idea. I wish we could have cut all developers off from the lake lakes reservoir so i so i have a great big patch of tall great basin sagebrush on the eastern quarter of my property that the dip that the deer went in. yeah and the little town that's next door to me which i don't live in wanted to tell me i was gonna like blade a bunch of that off and because they didn't like the looks of it or whatever, and I and I'm like, you, you can't tell me what to do on my land. <laughs> and by God, they can't. And I like that. I'm a free trapper, by God. My blues the highest bidder. This is the inside of that building. Now, see, you can see that he's using it, been using it for a shop. And I, again, I'm assuming that all this equipment will go with him. And although I'd love to have that band, I'd love to have a bandsaw. I don't necessarily need a table saw, but you know, if he left it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't complain too much. Where's that at? This is, this is what's inside the schoolhouse right now. This is what he was using it for. It, oh. was, his, it was his shop. There's a radial arena, a miter saw too. I didn't see that. Um, I'm hoping this work bit, I kind of hoping this work bit stays in here, but if it does, I'm going to have to change it a little bit. Uh, I'll have to think. That's about. way cool right there. Yeah. Well, so this is going to be plenty of room. But think about this. I found a picture. Well, multi, multiple pictures of little one room schoolhouses. And, you know, one room schoolhouses still exist in places like they're dead places like this and probably you were you had small out there they had small schools well i guess they did everywhere at one time but this in my lifetime i remember little schools where people had that were either two rooms or one room or my my kid my cousins all went to school in a i think it was a two-room schoolhouse because they had i think they had two grades in each room maybe it was three because they had first through eighth grade in there and um you know they split them up but anyway if you look in the if you look in pictures of one room schoolhouses you walk in from the end and what you see at the far end is all that is the blackboard right and the teacher's podium or whatever she taught from maybe a desk uh maybe a big old great old big american usa map and maybe a flag uh, could have been a picture of George Washington and, and Abram Lincoln on, on there. And that's what you see when you first walk in. And then in the middle of the classroom or the body of the classroom, there'd be on each the classroom is split kind of like where the table saw is. Cause right there would be a pot belly stove of some sort. Yep. And there'd be desk rows of desk and or tables down each side. And what I honestly thought about doing was, kind of doing that in the same way so when you walked in you'd see your flags 
Yeah, and, and be able, it would look kind of like walking into a schoolhouse with a couple little desks, maybe that people could somebody could sit and read on or draw on, uh, which is stuff I do. See, so I could go in there. I might go in there and set up a drawing table of some sort, and you know, and just leave it like it's a schoolroom. But uh, that's on the front half or one end of it. And then the rest of it would be my books and my library and my reading chairs and my studio, and if you will, and uh, you know my computer stuff. So I'm thinking about doing that. This is the kind of she shit I want, Rhonda. If that comment will get you kicked out of my room faster than you can even imagine. <laughs> Don't you give my wife that kind of idea. She's already tried to steal my little schoolhouse once. We, I would ask it for Boot. He throws that Highway 66 sign in. Yeah, I should have, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to have that on there. because And he might leave it because this is Highway 66. It's not the Highway 66, but it is Highway 66. Right. It's Tennessee 66. It's Tennessee 66. And yeah, the other one goes from Chicago to L.A. or something. I can't remember exactly, but uh, one, of the, one of the burbs of L.A. There's a lot of property for sale around here, but they all have, I think, councils residential only and, and limit the number of and type of residential dwelling. Well, I like the fact that they're trying to limit the, t the number because, and and again, I do this kind of zoning and stuff. I kind of agree with because that keeps it from getting like they do around here. And I know they do it down there too where we're doing it in places, but they build subdivisions and the houses are about this far apart. And I'm not kidding. You can reach across easily. And you know, and then there's another house and another house and another house. And you got about a postage stamp for a yard and everybody fences in their backyard so they can have a little bit of privacy. I and, agree. Tina. And I just, I don't, you know, I just, that's nuts. What are you agreeing with? Well, Ian said that that was going to be Brenda's she shed. And Tina said, no, that's Tim's man cave. Thank you, Tina. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be my room. That's going to be my library slash studio slash whatever I decide to put in the other end. And I've already, Brenda bought, is going to buy me a, a nice bookcase she found for sale the other day and um, a couple of other things. So we're getting rid of a lot of our furniture we have now. Partly. Was, that, was that photo you sent me, were you guys procuring that? Yeah, we're trying to. We're that, planning that. on it. We pick it up Wednesday if nothing happens. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, in the yard and hers, too. What did Brenda say? I let him have the man cave because all the house and basement are mine. <laughs> and the yard. <laughs> yeah, it's all yours, baby. <laughs> so you get to worry about who mows it. <laughs> Mike, you ever been around a, a robo mower? <laughs> I looked at a Husqvarna robo mower system i thought that'd be good i can just let it mow you know is it one of them goomba things that you just turn loose and just well, let kind it of, yeah kind of like that and it just mows your yard you know you put a fit you put a ring around it with wire drive it into the ground you can't see it and then the mower just kind of follows that and learns the yard and then it just starts mowing and it never mows the same pattern twice apparently that way it don't just leave you know tracks in it <laughs> That's the barn is a good brand. What are, you, what are you reading now? I'm just laughing about some robo mower out there, like <laughs> firing itself up and going and. <laughs> well, it'd be electric. <laughs> you wouldn't hear it run. <laughs> I feel like a remote mower would throw rocks and animal poop everywhere. <laughs> well, I don't have any. Well, no, I can't say I don't have any animal poop. In the country, the neighbor's dogs go shit in everybody else's yard. Pardon me. <laughs> this show's going to get gonna get censored. We're going to get censored for sure. I said, anyway. I said Jerry's kids. We've cussed <laughs> like 18 times. <laughs> so now that was the last picture of the house, guys. That's and it. We're gonna, 
and then we're going to enter into the Bronze Age. <laughs> Thank you. I thought you'd appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you got any more questions about that, then we're a schizophrenic show today. Yeah, we are. So yeah, that was the last of that house stuff. And I wanted to talk a little bit more about the Bronze Age stuff and that battlefield that we that Mark wasn't here to talk about. I wasn't here. So you guys have to suffer through it again. Yeah, but I didn't put, I didn't, I meant, I wanted, I thought about putting a few of those slides back in, but I really didn't. I just kept the slide part of this down to weaponry, basically what, what (laughs) stuff was made out of bronze. And I found a really good um, link and I've got it in here somewhere for, that shows a guy making bronze today and using it to cast a sword like they made then. Um, what do they call those things? Um, Colish or Colish? Um, you'll, you'll see it. I mean, all these swords have been made on the, the uh, Forge and Fire, if you ever watched that, because they like to do that. So anyway, the Bronze Age, in case you don't know, was considered the third phase in the development <laughs> of material culture among the ancient peoples of Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. Are you laughing at me or somebody else? I'm laughing at I'm laughing at Tina. She says she she's refusing <laughs> to count squirrels today because of celebration of your new home. <laughs> well, thank you, Tina. That's quite all right. <laughs> anyway, following the Paleolithic and Neolithic periods, Old Stone Age and the New Stone Age, respectfully, the term also denotes the first period in which metal was used. So that battle that, that we talked about last week in that battleground that... Uh, that Tolens. Tolens was where they, they found... That was the first really large battlefield that they found in that part of Europe with that kind of numbers of people in combat and they were all using they were using brass weapons. So that's why they call it the oldest battlefield in Europe. Like if people had conflicts and fought, I'm sure the Rome by this time the Romans were fighting, the Greeks were out there, you know, doing their thing and all the other people around them and the Middle Eastern folks were doing their thing. But bronze was the metal of the day. It's the first thing that man learned to make and blend and manipulate so they could turn it into stuff. And not just weapons, obviously, but I knew that'd be the part that men Mark could have more fun talking about. <laughs> well, I was amazed by the number of injuries on those folks they found that had stone tools in them stone tools were still being used by some of those people slant arrowheads were still being used by at least one side of that battle yeah i mean there were a lot of bones with stone arrowheads in them. yeah and, and and some of them actually looked like the the way they were built looked like atlantle darts well, that's possible. I, I don't, that could have been, couldn't it? I believe it could have been. Well, certainly. I mean, it was, that was kind of the time period when at least European folks were switching over from atlatls to, to bows. bows. Yeah. And this group, and I suspect it was the group that was, I suspect, here's what I think was going on. And they've kind of said this. There was basically a group or an army from the north came in and attacked a, a village of, or a moving caravan or something of traders, which were all moving this road. They've now discovered enough material that they're pretty sure this was a major thoroughfare for the traders that were reaching down into the Baltic states and going north, maybe to the ocean. And maybe they were trading with the Vikings, but it was the Vikings that came down and attacked them. In fact, some people now refer to it as the Tolens Massacre instead of the battlefield because on the on the rationale that one side was an army, you know, that fought, you know, the Vikings went around doing their thing all over the northern hemisphere, practically, or at least the Arctic part of it. And the people that were were defending themselves the other combatants probably weren't 
professional soldiers. If you want to, sorry guys, I'm getting kind of sideways there. Sorry. Depends on how what's hurting. I realize that's about out of camera. Anyway, so that's what they think happened at Tolan's. Well, this site is this name that I'm not even going to pronounce. Well, like you, maybe I can pronounce that part. I'll read that. Can you read that? You're better at that than I am. Arson, Tapi, Ruins, Malatia. I, I guess know. this is where it's at, and this is what's coming. Anyway, this was the ruins where they found the first bronze sword. As of right now, this was where they found the oldest bronze sword, or maybe even uncovered the first one they'd ever found. I'm not sure about that part, but anyway, this was a very old site of a, a town or a city. I mean, this is what amazes me in Europe, is some of these really ancient civil building, civilizations that came and went and it happens here too, but not on the same scale that it has over there. It's just like going into Rome and excavating, you know, buildings and whole parts of the city that are 20 feet underground now. So it just amazes me. And this is just a rough collection here of things that they would have used in that battle and, and just general things of the Bronze Age. And you see a lot of them are, are very, very similar. This 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 design right here, which is pretty much this design also, and this one, maybe even this one, were considered to be kind of a leaf pattern for a blade. You can see how it gets skinny, and then it gets wider, and then back to a point. Um, uh, most people refer to that as a leaf design or a leaf style. The very top one, is referred to as a sax, and that was one of the Vikings' favorite weapons. And, and some of them were thicker in water. Some of them had a sharper decline, but they almost all came down to a point kind of like this. The bottom was more rounded or straight for the edge, but the top came out, the top of the blade came out parallel to the bottom, and then it nosedived down to the tip at some point. And that's, that's called a sax. That's not a great picture. One, none of this. I had to blow this up, but I like the collection. And here's another one of those blades. I'm, I think I've got these named in a minute. And this is just general things they found on battlefields that that are brass, and a lot of the same stuff was found on that Tolent's battlefield. Are they brass or bronze? Excuse me, bronze. Are that so? That whole series of swords there are bronze. Those are all bronze. Free steel. Free, free steel. Iron. This, free is iron. Iron. this is all pre steel right here. I yeah. think I've got a couple of pictures of steel blades where they were comparing them. And I realized that after I put them in, but I'll think I can tell you which ones those are when I get so that there. second sword down on that top photo. Up down, here? Yeah, that that's a real that hilt design, the the pommel on that or the the uh Palm on that hill yeah. is a real kind of common. They used that design a lot, that double, yeah, that deal right this there. And they, you, you see this kind of a design where they were making, I think, where they were making them and kind of mass producing them for two and i've seen them two different ways one i've seen them with wooden handles attached to the blade and this is just you know they could set something up and make these and the, and the blades all day long or the the bronze masters or whoever you call them and then finish them and polish them out if they even did polish them i right. suspect most of them look more like this and i have also seen them cast with this pommel and hill where, that, where that's like a another piece of bronze where it's all well it's one piece of bronze actually yeah and then they could wrap the handle with leather or put something on it if they so choose and i i saw a guy he demonstrated using modern tools but he demonstrated kind of how they did that and you might have done this i've done it on things you can take a like a punch and, and a hammer and sit there and just make dimples all over something like that out of brass pretty easy and then you can get a better grip on it so if you were swinging it and it just happened to be you know blood spattered so tina asked what was bronze 
what did bronze consist of? And it's got no iron in it at all, Tina. It's 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 like tin and copper mostly, and, and copper, maybe antimonium if they had that. And and for a gazillion years, human beings fought over tin mines. Yeah, in your in Europe, because that that was part of the 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 alchemy that you used to create bronze which at that time and during that time period was king of the land I yeah mean, i mean it was what ruled it kind yeah. of was what ruled the world for in that in europe yeah in europe for, for, in a parts long of time. for a while and um you know before steel was figured out it was yeah uh, mate really i mean big, it, we went from we went from bronze to iron Right, and they were making kind of pure iron weaponry, and then they created steel from iron, and and various alloys um, later. But yeah, it was uh, it was all fighting over minerals. <laughs> now this, this, and we still fight over. Minerals. We still fight over. Them, that's true. This blade here in the lower left hand corner is an original that was dug up in one of these spaces what a beauty and if you look at it probably got battle damage on the edges this this looks to me very similar to and it could even be one of the swords they found it that tolens because they that's the one i was saying last week that the guy they have a, they had a guy that cast new swords he took old swords originals that they dug up at tolens and compared micro photograph the whole edge and all the dents and dings and marks and anything that might have been caused by battle and fighting he photographed all that in large magnification and then he made a couple of swords just like that cast them himself and they used them between two trained fighters in europe that were uh and it was, i mean it was a recreation and they weren't killing each other but they were trained in the style of combat used in that period. And he took that, those swords from those guys, knowing what they had done, what ma maneuvers they had used with the sword and compared it microscopically with this sword. And he found a lot of the same marks on that iron, that uh, bronze age sword that they put on the new swords by the fighting. So, you know, they could, therefore he could kind of verify that that sword was used in the battle or used in battle, and uh, I, I, I thought that was great. I mean, that's just the detail they went into some of that stuff for a guy like me was fascinating. I what love that exper experimental archaeology that they do now that's, you know, they do that with stone tools too. Like, well, how would they have, why is the wear on that tool the way it is? Yeah. And they kind of have figured out a bunch of that stuff just based on modern humans using similar tools, tools to, you know, a butcher, a bison or whatever, you know, and, and, um, fa it's fascinating. Yes, Tina, you're absolutely right. That and what they now call rare earth metals, or I think that's what they call them. Just all the stuff that's inside our cell phones and computers to make microchips and that kind yeah. of stuff. That's, I mean, that's what the next, could be what the next great wars will be fought about. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, oh, you were talking about that. They all, in the toilet stuff, They the first bone I ever found at toilets that got them started even digging it, and I think it was in the mid-90s. I mean, it's not been that old. For a battlefield to be discovered at then that amount of time is really not that common. Um, that when they did, and they didn't even work on it for years because people didn't realize what how significant it was. And they started looking, but they had a bone uh, like a well, finger. and it was underwater. Well, yeah, part of it was, yeah. And that this bone, well, yeah, part of the year it's all underwater. It was swampy land right, right. there. That'll happen. The they had a bone with an arrow, a flint arrowhead in it. Right. And the guy that picked it up recognized that that was significant at the time, but he never could really get anybody else to 
show any interest in it for several years. Kind of like George Mc, McJunkin. Kind of like George McJunkin. That's exactly right. So, but what they found now, they were this microscopic testing and looking at stuff, they were able to tell if that guy, when he was shot with that arrowhead in his leg or whatever that bone was, did was he crippled after that? Did he did he walk off the battlefield or did he was he did he lay there and die? Or did he die, you know, three weeks later from the injury? Because there was a lot of speculation on how many people may they may have just left the dead and dying on the on the feet battlefield and you know did let's let them die and uh some of, them, some of them could have lived for days or weeks afterwards and maybe even been carried back to and the bone would have been healing if it had right. and they can look at that microscopically and tell now how much healing had occurred because actually as soon as something like that enters the body your body tries to start healing it right away right and so they could tell if it was that kind of healing had gone on i thought that was fascinating too so you know, where they thought a lot of bodies may have wandered, people might have wandered off from the battle and died later, or even stayed at the battlefield but died later and maybe were dumped in a common grave or something. They realized that most of the people that they dug up died right there in the battle that day or the two days they fought, whatever it was. So, you know, basically, if they stuck an arrow in your knee and you fell down, somebody came along and clubbed you with something. Either yeah. ran you through with a with a bronze blade like that, or hit you in the head with a hammer, which I'm going to show in a minute. Hammers and axes were still a major weapon at that time. And now this is a this is a brass sword. Or bronze. That, that is an. Oh, I got to look them up. And these two are not, but this style of sword that was made in bronze a lot before they came along with steel. So that yeah. one is an Egyptian sword. Yeah, but you know what? That sword was used by a lot of other countries too later. And oh, they said cool. they actually realized that this hook, a lot of the fighters liked this hook because they could grab onto somebody and then, you know, whack them, whack their heads off or, you know, break their arm or whatever. And then, you know, do it to them. And uh, I'm reading up on that sword. <laughs> Do unto them. <laughs> well, as they were wanting <laughs> to. What was the name of this sword? Hang on a minute. Look at that beautiful horse head. I'm on oh, two, yeah. Two of those swords have horse heads on them. They do. Some have birds and other animals, but a lot of them do have horse heads. You're absolutely right. Um, I had this pulled up yesterday. There are people. <laughs> going yeah. for, I'm going for coffee. I'll be right back. Okay. Let me see if this one tells what that sword. I know the name of these, but I just can't remember them. Sword, shields, armor, axes. I know what an axe is. Halberd, daggers, dirks. Um, bows and arrows. Well, that don't tell me, did we? I knew what all that stuff was. Bronze Age sword. Here we go. Um, this is a kopesh. Yes, this style up here is a kopesh. That's that's what it was named, and I think it was first found in. It was an Egypt. It was a favorite Egyptian tool of the trade. And there's a good another good picture. I should have put that in there. Okay, I don't have the name of this other one. Um, and I like this one. I've seen this one made a couple of times on, on um, Forest and Fire. Well, who we, I don't know. You guys probably don't care what the name of it is, but you know I hate to... You know I hate to uh, not not have this and i just had it i thought well i'll pull that up and then i sat here this morning and closed it all up like a dodo they may i want i wanted to i knew you and i would discuss this a little bit but they made some axes 
in bronze and hammers in bronze that I just don't get. <laughs> they were just made in such a fashion that to me, they don't make a lot of sense. And I guess they changed them. Again, this is probably a steel sword, but it was the same thing they used to, and this was a gladius. I think they referred to this one. This is what the, the gladiators in the Coliseum would have used. And, but they started out using bronze and this was part of the scabbard that they found along with this one when they dug it up. Now these at the bottom uh, were a little bit more ornamental and they think these were used prop. They weren't sure if these were ever actually used in combat or if they were more of a ceremonial thing, but they have seen quite a few of these and they made one of these on fortune fire, but they made it out of steel. Yeah, I've seen, I saw that one. Yeah, me too. Actually, I, mean, I probably saw all of them, but. <laughs> and this is how you made a bronze sword, basically. They built the mold. And, out of wood. Out of wood and poured, you know, over time they might have fashioned clay in here or something, but mostly it was wood. And then they would put a clamp, another piece on top of that, and they'd pour this mold full of. Well, this, I don't know. You reckon they left that open and made that? Nah, surely they wouldn't have done that. That had to be a double piece. I would think there would be, you'd pour it in there and there'd be a lid. To hold it in there. I would think you would have to put the two halves together and pour from the end. Yeah, that's um, that's what I assume too. But I just, the reason I said that was that this, this half of a mold over here, whatever this is, doesn't match this. But basically what you'd have is the opposite of this side of the blade on top of this, and they bolt that together and then pour the, the heated liquid bronze down into this channel or this cavity, and you would pour it in there until basically it, you, it wouldn't go anymore, and then you'd stop, and then when you pulled it out, it wouldn't, it was crude. I mean, the edges might be rough and you, actually you can see, I don't know if you can or not, but I can little marks on this as they go along. And those are probably vents they put in the mold to let out the hot gases to help not make bubbles in their bronze. Um, but I thought that was cool. And the reason I thought that was cool was this link right here. will take you to a, a gentleman. I don't, let me see if this comes open. Which would be like, you know, the molds we made that dad and I built. And every now and again, you had to put it, you know, they were doing that investment casting process. Right. You, had, you had to have on some, some molds, you had to have a event or it wouldn't fill properly. Right, because all the air's got to go somewhere. Yeah, it's, it's got to get, it's out, gotta of get out of there. Offline. Oh, crap. Is that you dinging? Yeah, it was making sure it was me. Um, the Predators are playing the Ohio team. As you can see, I've got stuff on here that I didn't mean to have. I had, what I had up there a minute ago was a, guy that was making a sword like this based on this link from this link right here and i was going to try to show it because it has some really cool you remember a long time ago you and i had a discussion about recycling aluminum cans and you made a comment to me you may you may not remember but i've never forgotten it and that was that you know, we should be recycling aluminum cans now so our kids aren't digging through the waste. The, uh, land They're going to be mining landfills. Mining landfills to get it out. Well, this this guy builds a bronze sword, which we won't watch at all, but it's interesting how he finds his material. So I'm going to see if this will play just a little bit. And again, you probably might not be able to hear it. There's a hmm, video file. No. Huh. I wonder if I can make that a video. I mean, it is a video, but. So. 
there. If you guys can see that for a moment, I'll make this a little bigger to get rid of all the politics. This is an electric motor. <laughs> what? It just had the vicious faces on there. <laughs> I got rid of them. <laughs> the, uh, and this is the new them. for <laughs> copper. Can you hear that? Yeah. Good. <laughs> he's getting that little that little coil out, off that motor. Yeah, he's gonna pull that coil and all that brass in there. Yeah, all that copper in there. He's gonna unwind it like you see there now, and he's gonna put it in a um. What do they call that? What do they call those uh, cup crucible? Like this, Tina. I hope you can see this, Tina. And he just happens to have some pewter that he has surf sourced from flea markets. If you read, if you could read the bottom commentary, you'd know they'd show all this. And he's melting that pewter down. And he could, he found that he, you know, he had it had enough numbers and info on it that he knew he could melt it down and get. Which uh, is high in ten. It's high in ten, exactly. Some lead, but mostly tin. So he makes wow. a brick of that. <laughs> he didn't pull that out of there that uh, quick. So and that just looks like that burned his whole hand off. Well, it would have if it was still hot. You and I have molded enough round balls to know that. <laughs> so anyway, this is the gentleman so doing it. It's very easy to get in motors, but tin, on the other hand, can be quite tricky to find, especially if you don't want to pay the full price of solder or if you're looking to get a good amount. So my advice is to buy pewter things from thrift store, since pewter is made mostly of tin. Just avoid things that look super old, because it used to contain lead and that is toxic, which is probably not a big deal for a cypher sword that would have been used on the battlefield by figures like Achille, Odysseus, and other Greek legends. And interestingly enough, in ancient Greek, these words weren't just used for combat. There have been plenty of ceremonial cyphos found in burial sites, indicating wealth and prestige. But it wasn't just the ancient Greeks that used cultural objects as a store of wealth. That trend still continues today because to modern billionaires, high-value art is not just a collectible, it's an investment. It makes sense if you think about it. The law of supply and demand dictates that desirable pieces of art will increase in value. But what if you could harness this demand to your benefit without needing millions for full painting? Masterworks, a revolutionary fintech platform, had that same question, so they did something about it. They figured out a way to make no. legendary works of no, art available to everyday people like us. Just go to masterworks.art slash Blackbeard Project for a special invite only page and create an account for free in minutes. Thank you for checking out Masterworks as it really supports the channel at this. So now he's got that's the crucible with all the copper and that piece of tin down in there. You know what? I can make this even better, maybe. That's about as good as I can get it, I guess. So this is a small kiln that this guy has, or a foundry. Actually, probably is a better word for it. I don't know what heat it gets up to, but he's dropped that whole crucible down in there. Those are fire bricks, by the way. And that's what you call damn hot. <laughs> and here goes the tin. That just melts so quick. If, I don't, if you don't think that's not hot, just check out how quick that melted. <laughs> as soon as he touched it. And this is how he's going to... This, this is the modern way to make a... That's he's making loud. his mold with a CNC machine. Yeah. Is that too loud? Not for me. But I can't hear. Well, not for me either, but I can't hear either. See you, Diana. Thanks for stopping by. So anyway, he's making his mold. I wanted to show you that. And this is how he made the this is how they would have made the actual mold for the sword. 
and the, and the process today or then was very, very similar. You got to pack in that sand or mixture of whatever he's using. And today they have things that might not be sand. I'm assuming that's a release agent there. And he put in his mold. And now he's going to make the top half. Then he's going to get a whole lot more bronze. This is the bronze he made. It was in his crucible. And obviously he would have done that straight out of the foundry because foundry, it would get cold fast. So he did pour it in from the end. He did pour it in from the end on this one. Oh, and that one didn't work. He had a, he had some leaks on that one. He did. Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so he did it again. And this time he came out with what he wanted. So it's got the hilt this time. And he cast in a hilt. And, yeah, he cast it all in. And I'm quite sure he cuts this stuff off and keeps it for his next project because that's bronze ready to go there. And now he's... So he's going to dress it up and get the slag off. And, the you know, there's always a slag around the edges. Just the like they would have had in the old days, he's got his power tools going. Yeah, well, <laughs> that, there are a few differences here. But, <laughs> you know, he's making it just like they did back then. <laughs> Look at that yeah. beauty. And the thing about bronze, and they've found in various other battlefields, Greek battlefields, etc., is that these tools were, I mean, they were, they were not hardenable like steel is. No. And so when you whacked a guy wrong with that tool, you just bent it. Yep, it just bent on you, and then you could either keep trying to swing it, or maybe you could put it between two trees and straighten it out. So if you were like Achilles attacking the gates of Troy, and you hit a guy wrong with your sword, it it just it just doubled it over. Yeah, I want to, and I'm going to make a comment here. You see how he, he pinged that down all around the edge? That actually compacts the edge a little bit, and makes that a little bit stronger yeah uh, so that and compacts it and um uh, and he does that on a couple of different pieces here and then he of course takes out the marks but the compact part of the what he did is still there and again i about bet you he brushes up this bronze and keeps it because you can read melt that and the, all the impurities that might be in it from your shop floor will float to the top and you can scoop them off and then you got your clean bronze again let's see he's gonna what he's gonna do next okay he's gonna paint the handle and did I, yeah there we go he's gonna paint it and then again he's gonna use a, a pneumatic tool to do this and i think he's i'm not positive he puts anything on he's gonna leave it like this well he's gonna do this but he's not going to wrap it in anything. I'd like to know what he put on that bronze. That's that's cool. I like that. That is cool. And here's the thing I read also about this. When they started using these like in the <laughs> the arena, what do they call it, in, in Rome, the Colosseum for yeah. the gladiators, they made these quick and fast because, you know, one great battle and they're done. And, you know, that's Another way of knowing how much they used the Colosseum for gladiator battles. The Romans were bloodthirsty and they liked to watch this kind of stuff. So they did this quite often. But that's a cool finish. I like that. And this, he's going to make some, he's going to do a little bit of engraving here. We don't need to see all that. That's his engraving tool. <laughs> He ain't really hitting it that fast, guys. I don't think he's got it in a machine. He's just speeding up the film to make it sound like that. And right here is what it turns out to look like. Oh, that's cool. I didn't see him do that. That must be a piece of steel. Oh, no. He's going to put that in there and leave it. He's inlaying it. Could be lead or they could have used silver if it was something for decoration, which is what he's making these for. These are for decoration. 
Nobody's going to do battle with these. Damn, that's a fast. But fight. they would have. I mean, they would have. That they would have. If you were a professional, you would. Yeah. Have, you'd have had your fancy sword. Oh, well, that's true. At least you would have carried one around. I mean, you look at that. What a shine he put on that thing. Oh. <laughs> I wonder if that put a big mark in it. So, so you can see that a while a bra bronze sword was not the equal of steel by any means, could be quite effective in dispatching your fellow man. Or fruit or vegetables. Or, or fruit and vegetables. <laughs> exactly right. I hope he eats that. I, I hope he didn't just waste that pineapple. So anyway, and this I think this guy or this company, he I think he sells these uh, and other weapons, brass weapons and tools of the turret time. Well, it's gorgeous. It yeah. And we will But there but there was a real reason why when they discovered iron and how malleable it was and how you could actually treat it with heat and make it stronger yeah we went from bronze age to the iron age <laughs> and they didn't look back and it wasn't like well let's make let's keep making bronze weapons they just quit making bronze weapons maple bacon says i think i missed too much conversation here maple bacon he, <laughs> he's I mean, got a cnc yeah. machine he's got more money than creases <laughs> Maybe you should, Mike, but I'm going to tell you right now, it's not made me any money. So there you go. But I'm probably not trying hard enough. It, this this was just an example of how this design in bronze followed suit as they learned to make steel. And, and I think by looking at these two blades, that this was probably an earlier blend of iron or steel versus this one. And I'm basing that on the rust pattern that's on this one. Uh, one might have a higher carbon content as they were learning how to mix and blend and make steels. I re also read something about... <laughs> <or now. laughs> Bronco sword Vegematic. <laughs> Right on, Chuck. The Bronco Sword Vegematic. Can you see a commercial for that? I think Saturday Night Live might. I, I could see a commercial for that. Uh, Saturday Night Live could have done a, they might have done a Samurai Bronco, or, you know, Vegematic. I'm not sure. <laughs> Stern, what's his name? Who was the, God dang it. Who was on the first couple of years of um Belushi? He's he's, he's passed, yeah. John Belushi. John Belushi. Not what's the other one? Act you you hit your mute button. Oh, I was gonna blow my nose. I wasn't I said Ackroyd, but is that right? I don't know if that's right. It was John Belushi. He was a samurai. Yeah, he did the samurai part. Yeah, it was Dan Aykroyd. Okay. <laughs> the, the Ronco Sword Vegematic. How many people in this room? And I bet it's going to be few. Remember the Honeymooner show with Jackie Gleason? <laughs> And the time him and Ed came, or Jackie came up with this Vegematic tool that was a one-handed thing, and you could slice and dice, and you could peel carrots with it and potatoes. And he bought up like somebody's whole warehouse full of these things because he thought that was going to make him a millionaire. And they tried to do a commercial for him, and he couldn't even say it. So they, thought they never, you know, made it, but. It slices, it dices, it julienne fries.
Oh, the joys of the 50s, 60s, and early 70s. <laughs> okay. Now, now this, these, are, these are the, an early axe design. And I think this was obviously during the learning period because these had to be the most awkward things and not really that strong. And I think I included a picture of how they were mounted. It took me a little while to figure out how they were mounted because all the pictures I was finding just showed the, the edge then. And then were they mounted on a on a bent shaft? Yes, that's what yeah, I was gonna show you that. I think it right here is one that somebody makes today that you and they use that loop in the bottom to actually tie the head to the shot to the handle. Over here is another. This is actually a, more of an old style setup, and they put the, this end of this fork of a tree or a limb, and they put that top in the into the axe. And it may have been like this too. They made some that they would split the wood and put a piece of it on either side of the axe. But it was still this kind of axe. And I'm going to tell you something. I've never used one of these. But I've swung an axe a fair bit in my life, and I think this would be awkward as hell. Just my yeah, I, yeah, it don't make any sense to me. The leverage is all wrong when you hit something, and I'm not saying you couldn't again dispatch your fellow man with it, but it's not it's it's not as strong as an axe, a hilted axe. Now, like this bottom one here in the left hand corner is that way. It's it's got a it would have a shaft, a handle that came up through the material. But this was a, they, they think this was more, and that, this was a real design. They think this was probably used just uh, Hold as on, a Mike. real thing. Uh, Mike's leaving. What, what happened to Walter? Okay, everybody, I have to call her today. I have to take Walter to the dog park. Oh, Walter's, uh, well, he was, I think he had something going on with his tummy. <laughs> not laughing at him, but it looks like he's got to take him out to hump, Humperville. Oh, unless he got fixed. Well, that's what I'm asking. If something happened to him, he might. Yeah, Mike, if you're still on here, did something happen to him? And if so, good to hear he's okay. Yeah, if he's getting to go play in the dog park again. He gets to go hump everybody else's dogs. That's what he was. He got kicked out of the dog park, I think. <laughs> sort he of. Because he's a giant. <laughs> well, he's a giant and he's a humper. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, he was humping every dog in the park, you know. Well, that's what dogs do. Well, that's true. That is true. No good dog. All good dogs. But, but if he's a great big old dog, that makes everybody feel bad about their dog. <laughs> He, he got he got banished from the dog park. <laughs> <laughs> and here's a, a bunch of bronze arrowheads. And this one probably, well, no, it's probably, if it's small enough, it's an arrowhead. But this could have been a lance point, too. Some of these are. These probably, in fact, maybe most of these are. But these are. Well, go ahead. No, so knowing a little bit about arrowheads. All right. And stone and bronze. I would have been. I'd have still been shooting stone. Me too. And that's because of the problem we've been talking about all day. But bronze moving, moving the bronze to me for an arrowhead was silly. Yeah, it was almost like backing up. A flint flint arrowhead was much sharper than a bronze arrowhead, and didn't bend. <laughs> and didn't bend, and it would slice through more and do a lot more damage as it went through. And that's from a pure killing kind of fashion. The interesting thing to me is how many... Now, this is a basic design here, two-bladed arrowhead, but Mark and I both shot two-bladed arrows be arrowheads before. And I that's, still do. Well, me too, but... Well, you still do if you're using a rock, but... I mean, the, but I even, mean, even my steel yeah. arrowheads are, are two blades. So this was a bronze version of that, and that, that carried over. And I thought I had a picture, but I didn't. 
uh, they made a they also shot something that was sort of like a triangulated blade with three edges and they made arrowheads like that today too they well, also and those those probably if they were bronze were stronger and would be like a bodkin point that they used later yeah. in in ink you know the english used them to right to kill a hell of a lot of french people no, nothing um, personal against the French. <laughs> a lot of a lot of French knights fell to a bodkin broadhead. For good or bad, it was yeah. I mean that was a weapon of choice for the for the English. Well it, it longbowmen. When they came out and started using that as a, a truly militarized Yeah, when you were fighting knights on horseback in armor. And you were like a little dude running around in a leather jerkin. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real name, guys. You you probably like to have a, a bodkin broadhead. Yeah. This guy over here on the upper corner, this is an example of somebody who's make trying to make new ones. And I don't know if I would do those look cool. They look cool, but would you want them that way with that shaft? I think I'd rather have a hollow tube to put the arrow in as opposed to trying to hollow the yeah, arrow. To it's put almost the like they've made a four shaft for the... Well, like they, did, yeah, like they, like they did with, with Adelaide darts. Well, that could be. Anyway. Anyway, I'm, those are new. I'm uh, drifting new. off into techno speak. <laughs> <laughs> like we hadn't been dr drifting all day and the war hammer or hammers in general and that's that i just realized that's that same picture of that axe i use but they did these the same way some of them like this one down this is a hammer down at the bottom made it exactly like some of those well actually this is not the same is it is that an ads with the with the bit mounted wrong well, they made edges like that, but they also made axes like that. Oh, okay. And so you could have probably mounted this like an adze if you, you know, if that's what your need was. So maybe they could use them for both. The reason yeah. I put, the reason I brought up hammers was they found a lot of the victims or the casualties on that field of battle at uh, Tolens, Tolens. Had been thumped. Had been thumped with hammers, be it mallets or hammers, wooden mallets, or probably something with a bronze mallet head on top. Because they just punched, they found them with crushed skull that you could still see the round part of the hammer or the shape of the tool. Ah. And so that that was still a weapon they used at Tolens. And that's the last slide. So you guys we, have managed. What we to have fly. done to each other is amazing. What we that we're still it's here. Disturbing. Yeah, we've never been real kind to one another. I tell you, it's uh, human human beings. I'm not sure we were that far above the monkeys or the apes, rather. Maybe in some ways, but uh, not in a lot of others. Although they do fight too occasionally. Chimpanzees do anyway. Well, and and other species they're they're hard on they yeah it's there's no there's no primate that is a an angel no definitely not and we and we even though we think we're above all that are we still are really good at killing each other <laughs> and my wife leaved it. I don't know. She was here a few minutes ago. Maybe she's still here. I was afraid I'd lost her there for a minute. Anyway, so that I wanted you to get a little taste of that. If you had a chance to look at that Tolan's battlefield, it was it was interesting. And uh, what I found probably the most fascinating was the mix of of stone tools. And bronze tools. That's another reason they think it was pretty damn early in the Bronze Age because yeah, it was right at the start, right at the cusp, right at the cusp of what was going on. Because they and they may very well have been fighting bronze against rocks and wood mostly, and and flint tips. Now in that case, I'd rather have the flint tip arrowheads, but 
you know, all animal spots or survive humans are just better at figuring out ways to do it. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good question, Tina. <laughs> better or worse? Um, generically speaking, I guess some would say better, but if you think about it, it could very well be worse. I mean, oh, I'm we're not worse. Say what? We're worse. Yeah, we're worse. What I was always just drove me to distraction over my whole life is thinking about that, why so much of it is done when we do this. And and this was another problem. Tolence was an example that apparently that it was for the same reason. And that's greed. I mean, most wars are fought because somebody wanted, we wanted their stuff. That's we why. Their stuff. And and that's what that was about. They they're pretty sure now that that was a battle against the traitors, and then maybe the traitors had their own army for defense. But I think they were they figure they were outgunned in this case, for lack of a better word. And um, what was I going to say? Oh, but the Vikings or whoever fell upon them were look wanted their stuff. I mean, they found all kinds of trade goods and. Ink, you know, trinkets and things scattered around that battlefield. So, you know, they're pretty sure that's what was going on now. And, um, and it was an established trade path. They also figured that out because the roads that they've uncovered since then, the bridge, there was a, there was a, there was a, I know we talked about this last week. They, there was a bridge built across this river and it was far more sophisticated than people thought they knew how to build back then at that time period, but they've discovered it now and they're, they've measured it and they're recording it and they're figuring it out. But to spend that much effort and time to build that and the road and going somewhere, it just kind of brought up the whole question about how long have they been doing this and when did they start these travel routes? And it's just like over here in the native Americans. I mean, you know, when you get looking at things, it's just like going to New Mexico and finding a piece of flint from the Flint River. Uh oh, somebody come in. So I think he might have company. Maybe it's Sammy and Boone. Sammy and Boone. I, I, I have a. I've been invaded by a whole whole cluster of grandchildrens. <laughs> they have descended upon you like a herd. They have lion. descended upon me like the plagues of yore. <laughs> Hi there, girl. <laughs> Say, How are you? <laughs> <laughs> That's mean. <laughs> Hi there. How are you? Are you good today? We're, good. We're going to be good. We're going to go saddle a pony. Oh, wow. Hey, what's up out there? Hey, come here. Come here, Barma. Come here, Owen. Chicken. This, this is my ham. I'm not going to eat me. Is that Ronnie? I don't know. I can't remember your name. Is that Ronnie? Hey, get up here. Up there on my leg. Come on. <laughs> Ride them, cowboy. There's my there's my see-through boy. <laughs> All right, off you go. Okay. Again. I'll saddle a pony here in a little bit. My goodness, somebody's growing up. Look at her. I know. She's about out of the picture there. How tall are you? You've grown since I saw you last. She's like seven foot three now. <laughs> seven three. Wow. She's almost five foot, she just said. Well, you're probably getting close. To, I don't know how tall your mom is. That you might be getting close to a family. My mom was only five two, so <laughs> she's she might go for the record. She might. She's a uh, Mama, like mama's not that tall and daddy's not that tall, so. You guys are going to go outside right now? Anyway, okay, off you go. 
I'm going to have to write them down, take pictures, and write their names down because I can't ever remember who's who. Upstairs for just a little bit. That was Eileen, Ronnie, Della, and Owen. Well, I thought that one, went, went, that was. Um, Mommy, hang on a minute. Eileen was the big one. Right. Bye, bye, Rhonda. Thanks for coming in. Have a great weekend. Or at least a good one. The one you had on your knee when uh, Owen came up, was that Ronnie? Ronnie was sitting on my knee the longest. Yeah, that's what I thought. She, She's my ham, and she goes, oh, we're not having ham. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, we're about ready to end up here. It's 1230, so probably time. Just in time. Hey, you know what? I've not been yawning today. That's a good sign. I must be feeling better. Yeah, that. I haven't been. I haven't yawned the whole show. I don't think. Maybe well, one. I think you made the entire show with no yawn. Wow, that might be a. That's got to be a record. <laughs> Some days I can't get through the first thirty minutes without yawning thirty times. Okay. Well, there I went. See? Now, there you go. You talked yourself right into I one. Myself. Tell me yawns aren't. Yeah, I am sleeping better, Tina. That's a good point. Now that things are settled out, I mean, they're settled down, but it's not over. It won't be over till we get settled in the other house or at least moved. Because now I'm packed, trying to pack my room up and, you know, making list and trying not to pack boxes that are too heavy for other young men to lift. <laughs> I hope I hope you have informed both of your son in laws that they have duties as That's assigned. I hope so. They hope they know it, so I hope they're planning on being here. Yeah. I did, Tina, I jinxed myself. And I did sleep good last night, and I didn't get up quite as early this morning. I usually get up between 5.30 and 6, and this morning I'll sit till 7, so. Oh, anyway, guys, I'm going to say good. We're going to sign off here. Thanks for coming in, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the tour of the house. I know that's not as big a deal to some people, but for us, it's been a big deal. And I, think, I appreciate everybody's support in that because I've gotten a lot of good wishes and thoughts about it from you guys so i appreciate that and it's and it's worked out i think for the way it should have i think we did find the house we should have gotten uh i really yeah, like the older house have found it first buddy yeah yeah you're probably right well i think when we first started looking it might not have been on the market they were well it was on the market but it might have had a sale pending and uh, after they got it, in space, I, they decided they didn't want it. But the, the engineer said it's fine. He didn't see a problem at all. So that was good enough for me. And he wasn't just some Jake leg next door that came over. Yeah, hell, that'll last 10 years, 100 years. He was a real honest to goodness architectural engineer kind of guy. So he knew what he was talking about. It'll be it'll be grand for you guys forever. Yeah, yeah and those beams under the floor, I didn't realize how big they were. That, uh, that's impressive. That gives me a lot of confidence. Anyway, I don't know what I'm going to talk about next week. Heck, you could set a, if the house fell in tomorrow, you could set a lodge up out there in the yard and it'd be fine too. <laughs> yep, it would. As long Let's as you see. got a library spot, you're good. <laughs> There's probably going <laughs> to, that's right. There's probably going to be two more shows on Saturday. And then I'm going to be off the air for probably at least two weekends, at least one, maybe two. Depends on when I can get the internet going out there. But the 30th, I know we'll be moving, so I, I won't be. Unless I decide, I might broadcast a little bit live on my phone or something just to uh, show the, the commotion and the action. Are you, are you guys doing the u-haul thing or are you going to hire a company beacons or somebody to come get you well let me tell you what i've done as of right now i've hired i am hiring a pod type unit 
A what unit? A pod. Have you ever seen a pod? They bring it to your house, set it in your drive. Okay, back here it's a new kind of a new thing. You can hire it just like a truck. They'll bring it to your house and set it off. I'm not going through the pod company, but it's the same idea. And they set it in your house and it opens up like a shipping container. Yeah. You know what that is. And you fill it up, put your stuff in it, and then call them and they'll come and get it. Now, if you have to, let's say you're building a house, but have to get out of your old house or you're going overseas for a sabbatical or something, you can put, they'll take your, container and they'll put it in indoor storage at least they're supposed to and that's what most of them are doing here so it's protected and then when you're ready to move back in somewhere they'll pick it up put it on the back of a truck and bring it to your new house and set it off there and you can either unload it and then they'll take it back the same day or you can unload it they'll leave it there and you can pay like an extra month's rent on it and they'll come back and get it when you're done so I've decided to do that instead of trying to do it all in a truck. Now that said, I will have to have some kind of a truck because one, um, they don't allow motorcycles or anything with gas. So I'm going to have to haul some of that stuff and something else. And uh, there's something else I know I'm going to have to move. Let me think what it was. Does, uh, does Petey have a, Phil Dalton have a, motorcycle trailer well i can't remember if he does right now or not he did um, but i'm not sure if he's got one at his house right now if he does we'll just roll them up on that i got one that's not running and one that is running and uh and i want i'm gonna take them both up there but you can push one you can push them up on a trailer yeah they can push them up on well the other one runs the good one my new one newer one it runs just fine I started up every week or so and run it for a while since I've not been able to ride it, but I don't, I'm not sure I may have to get the tags renewed. Now, if I do that, Phil will drive it up there for me. That's not a problem. Yeah. He can take it up. In fact, I, there's part of me thinks I could get on it and ride it up there, but I hadn't tried it. So I need to get on something smaller and see how my leg works. But anyway, that's the plan. And so we're going to, so Brent and I are going to start packing that pod unit or that unit, that container next Thursday morning. And we're hoping that the kids will come over, you know, during that, either that weekend or certainly the weekend after to help us put um, almost everything in there that we don't need. Well, everything in there we don't need. And then the, we'll have to leave some things in the house because otherwise it'll be pretty damn lonely. But, um, you know, I'm going to have a lot of my books packed and I'm going to have a lot of other things packed. I've got to kind of think about, there is a weight limit, 6,000 pounds, I think, on the one I'm getting. But I don't think that'll be a problem. The heaviest two things we've got that'll have to go on that trailer are the, uh, is my safe, back here which really isn't that heavy but you know i put that on in my large my big toolbox pretty heavy yeah so those are probably the two heaviest things that'll actually go on it as individual units the furniture the main furniture our couches are going to go bye-bye uh, i think the dining room table right now is going to go to goodwill because we're getting i believe we're getting another one next week Something we bought online or bought an auction and uh, then the next heaviest thing will probably be my library as a whole <laughs> and that's going to be kind of heavy but um, one yeah box. which I mean those are that's what always weighs yeah one box at a time so you know you can move we can move them like moving my daughter's library yeah Tina it probably does weigh about that some of them weigh a lot more. Some of them are sand filled and weigh, you know, a thousand pounds. But this one's well, not. Dad, you know, like dads. It, Your dad's, yes. That thing, I still don't even know how we got it in that building. I, <laughs> that's why my shoulders hurt today. Well, this one is or, uh, hurting today. Wrong, but Brad went and got it for me in his truck. And they helped him load it, but when he got it here, he did most of the moving and 
you know, getting it around. So it's not so heavy that it can't be moved. And I'll have to empty it out, of course. It's it is a little heavier right now. <laughs> there's there's poundage inside. Yeah. That's where I keep all my sacred lead and and uh, <laughs> a few blades and that sort of thing, you know. Some of my collectible items. That I you I don't I don't think you were there when we unloaded dad all dad's stuff, his milling machines and all that. Oh stuff. god no, I can't imagine I have we, moved the milling machine though. We were using spud bars, sliding it across concrete. And thank God the concrete was nice and smooth. Yeah. Which we had poured ourselves. Dad dad did, you know, he was good at concrete work. And, but not today, buddy. Did he but, learn to do that in the military or is that something he, he did? He did. He did. Uh, that would be good. We poured that stupid floor. I still remember it. I hated it. <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard work, man. I'm telling you. And you're and like you're in there with your shoes, you know, and it's yeah, it's yeah, it's a <laughs> it's a rough it's a it's a, a person that pours concrete for a living has my respect every day. We used to, I used to know a crew in Jonesboro that was it was done by a guy that everybody called, uh, what they call him? His name was uh, Romel Greenlee. A big black man. That's everybody a, called what, him Cherokee. What a great name. Yeah, he, he was a really nice guy. And he had the best concrete crews in that area. I mean, that man, if you needed a floor poured, that was within a quarter of an inch or something from one end to the other and flat and level and play, you know, like and smooth, like glass. Like, he was the guy you wanted to do it. Yeah. He always did perfect jobs. His crews were trained well. And he, I mean, he was great to work with. And, uh, yeah. that he was our, I, you know, after I worked with him a few times, I said, I right when I lived up there, if I ever have concrete board, he's the guy that's going to do it for me. I, I suspect he's probably passed because he is a, he might not be, but he was, he had kids I went to school with. So I suspect he has, but I hope somebody carried on the tradition. I don't know if anybody did or not, but he was good. He was really good. I'd like to, if I ever have something poured down here in Rogersville, I hope I can find anybody half as good. They're still out there. Yeah, there's some still out there. And they're starting to train some more, finally. Yep. There are people actually starting to learn some of that stuff again. Thank goodness. So maybe we didn't wait too long. But anyway. Guys, All right, so I'm going to go. Thanks for being on, everybody. I'm I'll gonna talk go. to you again soon. I'm going to go saddle a horse. You do that. I'll We'll talk drawings and words here in a few days or something. So I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Okay, bye. Out. See you. Out. All right, guys, I'm out too. Everybody have a great weekend. Um, I don't know, nothing going on this weekend, I don't think, but uh, everybody go have a good time. I mean, holiday-wise, you may have something planned. And uh, I hope the weather's decent. It's not going to be down here. I think we're supposed to have stormy weather tonight, today. And so far, that's what it looks like. So anyway... Everybody take care, and I'll see you real soon. Click the wrong button there. <laughs>